Come on in, everyone. Hello, Jeff. How are you? Welcome to our world. Won't you come on in? Hey, Steve. Cool. All right. I'm going to give it a couple of seconds, let some people filter in, type in uh, your name, where you're calling in from, and your most important questions about the art and science of Chinese face reading. Holy shit, RM, you did make it. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and transfer myself from this beautiful picture of me you see with my hand over my heart, talking from my heart. There's my beautiful wife and I. And finally, uh, hold on a second. Oh, let's go ahead. My striking visage. Hello. Welcome to Secrets of Chinese Face Reading. I'm David Snyder, and as you can see, I've got my Christmas vest on. Hey, from Kentucky, there's Amy. If you see me looking off to my, uh, I think this will be your right. No, sorry, your left. Uh, you're going to notice I'm going to, I'm, I'm, that's because I'm looking, my chat monitor is off to my side here. So it's not like I'm ignoring you or I'm distracted. It's just in order for me to be able to, to focus on everything, I've got multiple monitors going. So today is all about secrets of Chinese face reading. But before we jump into the topic for today, and, and I want to warn you guys, uh, if you were expecting like a, a 60 or a 90 minute webinar, uh, you may be a bit disappointed because my webinars tend to go two, three, sometimes even four hours. I've had to have webinars that go as long as six hours because when I'm with you, when I'm out here, and, and, and my goal is to, to share as much information as I can in the, in the time that we have. So uh, just like with so many other things in, uh, in uh, the, the realm of Chinese face reading, uh, my goal is to take you as far as we can in the time we have and point you in the direction of, of where to go for more, if that's something you feel inclined to do, if you feel that this, this study is for you. Um, that being said, if this is the scope of everything there is, we got time for this. Uh, but what you'll find that uh, among the many things that I've studied in my life, face reading uh, right along the side of NLP and, and literally graphoanalysis and hypnosis have given me some of the biggest, most powerful tools to understand myself, and to understand other people uh, better and utilize the persuasion and influence skills that I have to overcome blocks to my success and to really kind of get on my on on for, going forward with my mission in this life. So that being said, uh, for how many of you is this your first time on a webinar with me? Just go ahead and type first time in the web in, in the chat and uh, we'll go from there. Hey, Paul, first time, Jeff, Chris, Sir Snyder, Cornelia. Oh, my goodness. We got lots of people today. Very nice. Very, very nice. Oh, I'm excited. So this will be uh, – it's, it's important for me to know who's in my audience, largely because it depends – that really uh, – I don't like to repeat myself, although when you're in the teaching profession like I am – uh, repetition is kind of part of the game. You got to know, and sometimes you can look at the same thing six or seven times, and then all of a sudden something you didn't see before just pops up completely. Oh, excellent. Okay, so you, if you first-timers, just keep typing in the chat box. If this is not your first time, if you've been through a webinar with me, you've been through some live trainings with me before, go ahead and type that in the chat box. It's, you know, returning student or something. Just something simple so we know. And I'm doing it for a reason. <laughs> RM stalks me on YouTube. Very cool. Uh, second time for face reading. Excellent, AJ. Uh, Richard Cooper, just one before. Victoria returning. Excellent. Now, there's a reason why uh, I'm doing it this way. It's because I don't want you to believe anything that I tell you, although it's useful if you just go out and do what I tell you uh, because belief is not required. However, you'll notice there's quite a few returning students on the webinar. There's quite a few returning students who have been either, you know, one webinar with me or a YouTube live with me, or they've been to one or two trainings with me. If you have questions about things, ask these people. Those of you who've been to my webinars and my trainings before, uh, when you see a question about a training or about a topic um, that either I can't get to or you feel might be a little out there and you want to just concur with what I'm saying, because I'm going to tell you some shit you're not going to believe. Point blank. I'm going to tell you stuff. I'm going to explain things to you. You're just not going to. You just think that's full. That's bullshit. That can't be that way. Don't. We everything we do is based on experience. Uh, 
So we want you to have that experience, and we want you to, to trust these people who've been through these things. How many of you have, have come to us through, uh, through our, our YouTube channels? Okay. AJ says me. Richard, okay. So some of you are, are pretty familiar with the content we put out, right? My goal here is to give you something you can use. To, take, to give you something you can go out into the world and just put into practice right away and wet your whistle so that you want to come back for more. To that end, uh, at the end of the webinar, I'm going to be making uh, some offers. I'm going to show you some paths you could take if that's okay. So is it okay if I take you as far as I can in the time we have and then point you in that direction of where to go for more? Type yes if that's okay. Okay. Um, and I'm not sure at what point during the webinar I will make that offer but I will make it for you. Uh, some of these things are time dependent and time specific. So you, want, you might wanna stay on until the end of the webinar. However, if you can't stay on until the end of the webinar, there will be a replay. I'm told there will be a replay. And um, we apologize. For the, um, part of the reason we're doing this webinar is because the replay for our last webinar disappeared into the ether. We don't have any idea. We had a technical malfunction and um, and we couldn't, uh, we, we couldn't save the webinar. And it was an amazing webinar. We went like four hours. People were thrilled with what they were learning. Um, but we, we couldn't make good on that replay. So now we've got multiple recorders running. And, um, and so we're going to jump into this topic really, really quick. So a couple of other things. First of all, if politically incorrect language, colorful metaphors, swearing, or the word boobies offends you, this is probably not the best use of the next 90 to 120 minutes or, or however long we're going to be on. OK, um, I try I, my, my goal is never to offend people, but part of the job of being a face reader and as a hypnotist and a neurolinguistic programmer is to kind of poke the bear a little bit, is to find places where people are sensitive and provokes a response. Because it's not until you're provoked that you truly understand where your sticking points are and then you can fix them. You know, they, they say when it comes to problem solving, the first step in solving any problem is knowing what it is. So if something I say, even an innocuous offhand remark, all of a sudden you have this blown out or um, exaggerated emotional response to what I say, understand that there's, a, there's probably something going on that needs resolution. And using the tools that we have for free on YouTube, we may, if we have time, depending on how long my voice lasts, we may do a little bit of a shit clearing session at the end of the, the event just to, to give you guys a little extra uh, mojo for your day. Poke my reptile, please, says Leslie. <laughs> Colorful language is why you watch. Excellent, Tanya. You are my kind of person. All right. So that being said, now here's the next piece. This is your webinar. Now, if you look at the chat box, you'll notice that those chat those chat windows are flying by ridiculously fast. People are commenting, asking questions. My goal in this training is to answer as many of those questions as I can and still maintain a cohesive webinar. So please do type your chat box or your your questions about face reading into the chat box. And I'm going to go through, I have a, a, a fairly good idea of where, what I want to start with. And then as the questions, as I notice the questions, I'll kind of answer them where it's relevant. And we'll just go from there. Before I go out to a meeting and rip someone's lungs out, Jim. <laughs> oh, a little werewolf of London action, Susan. You trying to test me? See if I know that? Does it work with Botox? You got to watch it with Botox. And here's something I'm going to, I'm going to get right off the bat. I'm going to, I'm going to talk about some general stuff and then, uh, I want to, but since the Botox question, the Botox question always comes up. Whenever you take a poison and inject it into your face, remember that, the, let me show you a real quick map. This is how the Chinese look at your face. Let me see if I can find this real quick. Uh, hold on a second. I got to find what I'm looking for. Like I said, this, this is not a, a PowerPoint-based webinar. This is all organic. So let me see if I can find what I'm looking for here. I know it's around. No, that's not it. Um, where are you? Of course, I was looking right at it before I got here. G module, let's see if that's in there. Uh, here it is. Excellent. Excellent. I'm going to share my screen for you. Hold on a second. Okay. Can you, oops, that's not it. That's not it either. 
Can you guys see this picture? Excellent. You guys, okay, you guys can see it. This is how the Chinese look at your face, one of the ways in Chinese medicine. And by the way, that's where Chinese medicine comes from. It comes from, um, it's probably one of the oldest forms of diagnosis uh, in Chinese medicine. It's at least 3,500 years old that we know of. So going back to the whole, um, can you guys see okay? Okay, excellent. So if you look at the upper area, where right above the eyebrows, this is where a lot of people get their Botox, right in this area here. You see all the organs correlations that are in this area. So I can actually look from a Chinese medical perspective. I can look at your face. And if I know what these areas mean, I know in, in many respects what organs are affected. So if I inject something here, and by the way, I can also treat your organs. If I stick needles in these areas, I can actually treat your, your gallbladder or your liver or your spleen or your pancreas. But when people inject toxins into those areas, it freezes the musculature in and around this area. Well, that affects you energetically. And so people, first of all, it, it will impact your relationships because you'll lose your ability to express emotions effectively. One of the things that, that, that researchers have discovered over and over and over again is that the, the eyebrow area and that space around the eyebrows is in fact one of the most important areas for social interaction. Um, they, they've done tests with babies and, and people with no you know, shaving eyebrows and, and all kinds of interesting things. And what they've discovered is that when this area is frozen or missing, it negatively impacts social uh, relationships. So on one level, it's going to impact, yes, you're going to look pretty, you're, but you're going to be basically expressionless. It, and, it, and it can also cause you to, as AJ says, it can, it can blunt the affect. Affect is another word for emotion, in case you were wondering. Now, today is not necessarily about the, the health aspects of Chinese medicine. Today is, well, what, that, that brings us to a really good question, though. Do these match Meridian Points ha House has? Uh, in some cases, they do. In many cases, they don't. Uh, there are various correlations uh, below the surface. There are internal connections that are going on here energetically that allows us to treat um, and, and diagnose the face. And that's really what we're talking about when we're talking about face reading. We're talking about diagnosis. We're talking about diagnosis, but we're not necessarily diagnosing in a psychological or a medical sense, although in Chinese medicine, we can do that. We're diagnosing. We can, what, what, what can we actually diagnose? Well, let me type let me type this out for you really really quickly. What we can diagnose with Chinese medicine, we can diagnose your uh, health, um, your your constitution and lifestyle. We can diagnose. Let me, let me move this down a little bit. We can diagnose trauma history. We can diagnose personality and temperament. We can also diagnose, in many cases, psychopathy and related um, areas. Uh, one of the areas, and again, I don't want to. I don't necessarily want to. Um, to say that all these are related to psychopathy in a negative way. But what we're talking about, and we're talking about these areas, it's in other words, psycho-emotional issues. So these are the areas that in, in the way I've organized, and now this is not how the Chinese would would, uh, would organize this. Can you guys all see this okay? I know this is a little bit chaotic right now. It'll all become clear as we move through the process. In, in Chinese terminology, the, the Chinese would call this area Jing. And your Jing relates to the, the, innate, the innate constitution that you have, the traits that you've inherited from your ancestors, as well as your fundamental energy. In other words, how much fuel you have in this life. And depending on how you live your life, in other words, you, uh, what kind of a lifestyle that you lead, you can positively impact that or you can negatively impact that. One of the things that negatively impacts your Jing level is your trauma history. And we can accurately diagnose on the face uh, 
traumatic events that you've had all the way up from conception right through um, right through about 120 years old is the map on the face. Okay? It does sound wonky, but you don't have to believe it. You just have to play with it. Okay? <clears throat> Personality and temperament can be seen by the structures of the face, how, whether they're big, whether they're small, how they relate to another. And from this, from this, if we understand how to match traits and compare them and combine them, we can start to learn how to predict behavior in certain situations. This becomes extremely useful because now that we know how if somebody uh, has, has issues with authority based on the size of their brow line, the size of their jaw line, whether they're bossy based on the size of their cheekbones, um, we can start to slot these people more effectively into either relationships that are more useful, we, can, we know how to treat them a little bit more appropriately, and it allows us to really kind of understand ourselves better. Psychopathy and related issues go to, we could talk about charisma here. We can talk about um, many forms of, <laughs> you have a Frida Kahlo thing going on? Do not get in this woman's way. <laughs> Leslie is a force of nature, do not piss her off. <laughs> Okay, so are we are we kind of so let me just finish the terminology. Even I don't when I teach, I try not to use this terminology, but it, it's important to understand that there's a direct correlation in in Chinese medicine. The things that relate to your personality and temperament are called qi. Things that relate to um, your mental health, your spiritual or uh, transpersonal psychology, we call these things shen. And Shen literally means spirit. We're going to talk a lot about that, and that becomes extremely useful when we're talking about something called lie detection, when we're talking about charisma, uh, when we're talking about addictions. You can see these things by learning how to read people's Shens. And as a, as a face reader, I call, I call uh, face reading Chinese vibrational psychotherapy simply because um, this, the, well, the Chinese never separated this goes back to an earlier question about how can you really separate them. The Chinese never really separated the physical body from the mental and emotional body. To them, if you had anger issues, they were going to treat your liver. For people who um, have liver problems, you might, one of the doctors might look for is excessive anger or frustration. So they're cyclical that way. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, I use the word diagnose simply because um, it's something that everybody can readily relate to. We're not giving medical diagnoses in this webinar. Uh, what we're doing is we're assessing and evaluating and from that extrapolating on what a person's personality or temperament might be. Chinese medicine is used, ex is used extensively in the Orient to uh, in such areas as business and law as well as matchmaking to find somebody who is um, – a more of a, a proper sexual or romantically compatible mate. So are those things of interest to anybody, how to find a, a more sexually compatible mate or uh, how to slot people into your business life? Or, you know, I, I made a joke at my last face reading class. Uh, I said, you know, as, as I sit here looking at all of you, I know more things about your private parts than you could possibly want me to know because it's all on your face. Uh, Oh, AJ, does that, does that correlate with what I taught you? Uh, AJ says, the last person I asked out had short eyebrows, no time for me. And what I told, what I said, uh, uh, yes. Yes, Chris, that is a, you, you can do that, yes. Um, and it works for the ladies, too. So sex topics are always important. Of course, the men would say that. The ladies would never answer that way, right? <clears throat> right, okay. So that being lie detection, yep. Oh, Laura, you've been using this to tailor your advising to your students? Excellent. Perfect. So a lot of you guys are, use, are out there using this stuff already. That's excellent. All right. So let's, let's jump down and really start to focus on when we look at a – now, is everybody clear on the Jing, Qi, and Shen? You don't really need to understand those terms, but I want you to understand that the three big areas that we, we look at there's, – there's others, but these are the big ones that people want to know about – are uh, their fundamental energy, constitution, and lifestyle. And especially if you're a therapist or a coach, you want to look at somebody's trauma history. And, and the traumas that people have will mark on their face. In fact, here's where it gets really wonky, is if you actually uh, unpack somebody's face 
and you help them resolve the trauma connected to the wrinkle on their face, that wrinkle will actually start to fade and go away. And I didn't believe that. I was the first one to call bullshit. First time I went to a, a face reading seminar with my teacher, Lillian Bridges, and uh, I credit all of this to her. Although I'm continuing my studies and, and building on the things she taught me, she's known as the she's she's heralded as the the most prolific and uh, best face reader in the world. And so far, from the people I've studied, I've found that to be true. Um, and I, I I credit everything I've learned about face reading to her, and uh, I, I honor her with this webinar. Uh, yeah. Yaakov is asking to change the face by plastic surgery like a nose job to make the nose smaller. Here's the rule. Uh, I'm going to answer this one question. Uh, Alyssa, after my NLP practitioner, I look 10 years younger. That's not surprising. When you clear trauma, it goes away. Um, and we'll talk about that. We'll, 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 we'll talk about that. Um, but let me, let me just kind of jump back to these three things, the Ching, Chi, and Shen. These are the big things that people want to know about. When you are working with the face, when we talk about Jing, what we're talking about is think of it like solid rocket fuel. Your body has um, a, a certain level of potential or energy that it can utilize. And a lot of that is stored in the bony parts of your body. Okay, I could give you all the correlations, but basically your Jing is, look, is connected to your kidneys. Your kidneys rule your bones. And so anytime... You, you remove pieces of bone from your body. Anytime you're moving, removing uh, tangible, tactical, structural components, you change the jing of your body and you change how that jing or that energy and that personality is expressed. So I'll give you a really quick story that, that I learned from my, my teacher, Lillian Bridges. She had a, she had a client. Let me go back to... Um, let me go back to face to face for you guys. Um, and just so you see, these are the different areas. And we'll come back to this diagram shortly. Uh, hold on a second. So let me go ahead and. Okay. So one of the stories that my, uh, my teacher told me, she had a client, uh, older woman. Uh, her son was graduating high school, and his son, her son was a football prodigy, basically. Uh, this guy was just off the charts good at, uh, at his sport. And he had this, mag when you saw him, he had this massive, massive uh, jawline. I mean, it was, it was really big. He almost looked deformed. It was so big. And, uh, and so, but he was a superstar football athlete. In fact, he was already being scouted uh, from college to uh to play in the in the college leagues <clears throat> don't worry i'm back cornelia it's okay all right um and what so as a graduation gift his mother got him plastic surgery and got his jaw fixed and for some inexplicable reason he suddenly lost his ability to play football and so what we see is when we start to modify my screen is black. Reload. Oh, Rebecca says love that. I must be back because they're seeing my vest. Okay. Okay. So I'm sorry about that. So what happened was he completely lost his ability to play football. Now, here's what I have observed and what I've noticed. And some of this comes from my martial arts training and some of this comes from, from what I've learned from my teacher. Because he removed the bone. This, this jaw, when it comes to athletics... When it comes to athletics, one of the places you want to look at is the brow bone, the thickness of the eyebrows, and the size of the jaw. The size of the jaw and the, and the extension of the, and the thickness or, or um, prominence of the eyebrow bone lends itself to athletic pursuits. So if you, if you, if you go, don't believe me, this is what one of my students, TJ, did. Uh, yeah, like a gorilla, like a caveman, okay? When you see that big prominent bone, what you see is somebody who is built for athletics. And that athleticism can be marathon running, it can be weightlifting, it can be MMA, um, it could be you know being a professional soldier, mountain climbing, uh, you know rescue swimming. What about fat and being overweight? Well, fat's what we call false earth. That's almost never a good thing. But the it, depending on what your your character type is or what your body type is. Um, being, being a little plump is actually a good thing. 
Well, really, dep- AJ, it depends. The whole body armor thing really depends on um, if it's what we call false earth or not. When you're looking at true earth, which is it has a plumpness to it, what you're going to see is, a, is a, a, a smoothness and a glow beneath the skin. There's a rosiness to the plumpness. And, and when you see that, it's an indication that the person has what we call money bags or, or good earth. If it looks like it's just like blobs of paper mache that have been uh, pushed on there or they've got these jowls that are hanging and things like that. And again, these are I'm, you got to take these are being ta- I'm giving you these out of context, but I'm just going to give you some basic ideas. Um, <laughs> my lady has so much jing and I break all my bones. I'm so jealous. Um, and so when you see that, what you're seeing is what we call false earth. And false earth is what most people pack on when uh, we talk about the whole emotional body armor thing in our other webinars where people pack on 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds. What you're usually seeing is what uh, the Chinese would call false earth. Um, there aren't many uh, – Ivana, in what context? What about if you do face yoga? There aren't many stretching the, – the, fa- the muscles of the face work differently than all the other muscles in the body. The muscles of the face don't get better by exercising them. They get worse. You actually develop more wrinkles by exercising them. Um, false earth. You have a black screen? Uh, try ref- Cindy, try refreshing your screen and let me know. Okay? So how are we doing so far? Uh, there's a question asked, what if the dentist pulls a few of his lower, a few of my lower teeth? Well, first of all, you're going to lose Jing, first and foremost. And depending on which teeth they are, um, I don't know how that's going to affect you. But anytime you remove bone, there's going to be some loss of, of Jing. So you have to be very careful. That. Uh, I have a chart somewhere. I haven't spent a lot of time on teeth, um, but there is actually a chart uh, that Lillian gave me. Um, I would do everything that you could to, um, to save those teeth, but if you have to get rid of them in order to save the rest of the mouth, then you do it. You do what your doctor tells you. Okay. Um, I don't know if it's in her book, AJ, but if you email Kelly at uh, lotusinstitute.com and ask about it, she can probably send you a PDF or something. Teeth can fall out with age or disease, but a lot of it depends on, again, how you've taken care of them. If you have a lot of Jing, and that's one of the things that we look for, that one of the things that, that why Jing is so important. If you have a lot of Jing, innate constitution, and that's what prominent bones generally implies, you can go through some of the most horrendous conditions and survive and thrive. And that doesn't mean if you don't have a lot of Jing that you're not going to live a long time. It comes down to what the Chinese call Yang Sheng, which is right living. In other words, it's not about getting more Shen or more Jing. It's about how do you manage and preserve the Jing that you have. And you can use Qi, which is freely available from our environment, from our food, from our, bre- from our breath work, to buffer and, and utilize it. And uh-oh, I just went blank. Hold on a second. What just happened? Hold on, guys. Did we just uh, – can you guys see me? Can you guys still hear me? All right, let me – I don't I, – you're right. The internet connection is kind of wonky. Am I back? Okay, cool. All right, so a lot of you guys are asking about health, and I think that that's actually cool because usually people want to know about emotions. All right, so when we're talking about the face, the first thing that we want to look at is we want to divide the, the, the zones of the face. Now, if we're going to talk about emotions, hey, Jonathan, if we're going to talk about emotions, why did I pull up, why are we dividing the zones into the face? Because when you look at a person's face, the first thing you want to look at is which part of their head is larger. The reason is, is because what the Chinese through thousands of years of observation have discovered is that when people have a large upper zone here, these people are very cognitive or data driven. They're very cognitive. And so when you present information to these people, you have got to know that they want the facts. They want the data. They want the spreadsheets. They want the charts and all that other good stuff. If somebody's middle zone, 
the human zone is larger than the rest, you've got someone who's very practical or very pragmatic. All right, Monty is asking, how much of a face reading is instinctive as in reptilian instinctive, first impression instinctive? A huge amount. A huge amount of facial expression goes right to the reptile brain. Uh, in some of our influence classes, like specifically in killer influence, where we talk about nonverbal influence, um, this is one of the things that um, Jason asked, does this map to the VAKOG? I kind of sense that it does somewhat. Not in the way you think, Jason. There is, there is a slight correlation, but it's not, it's not in this segment. Beta asks, is there going to be a replay? Yes, there will be a replay. One way or another, there will be a replay. Um, so let's look at, and, and why am I showing you this? Because when you talk to somebody from a, from a business perspective, if you're presenting a product or a service, if you have, if you're, if you have a, a product or service and you see this large zone, lead with your data. If you see a larger middle area from the base, from the bottom, from the top of the eyebrows to the base of the nose, you want to lead with practical application. In other words, what it's going to do for the person. Does that make sense? This person could care, more often than not, this person could care less about what the charts and the graphs say. They want to know how it's going to help them. Okay? When you get someone with, let me move this down here a little bit. Uh, hold on a second. I got a lot of windows open here from the last webinar. When you've got someone who's got an, uh, a more developed lower zone from the base of the nose down to the chin, you've got someone who's very intuitive and instinctive. Uh, for those of you who are asking about the reptile brain, these people are going to go with their gut more than they're going to go with the data, okay? Yeah. If you look at Jay, <laughs> Jay is someone who is, um, and he, there's actually another thing that's going on with, I actually used him. Yes, Susan, I did do another webinar. <laughs> do the three zones also correlate with the ears? There are three zones to the ear, Monty, but they don't correlate to what's going on in the face. Okay. Uh, if we have time, I'll, I'll circle back and, and we'll talk about the ears. Eye spacing tells us a lot, Dan. Eye spacing tells us how um, calculative and analytical somebody is, how socially open they are uh, versus how socially closed off that they are. For those of you who want to start playing with this, uh, the normal width between eyes is the length of an eye. That's an average. So from from, from one end of the eyeball to the other, if you place that between the eyes, if it's longer than that, they have wide set eyes. If, they're, if it's longer, if, if, uh, if it's closer than that, they have close set eyes. And yes, um, they're, 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 the, the closer the eyes, the more specific and detail oriented they tend to be. But what that really means is they're more discriminating. They're more analytical. So they're not going to, they're not going to just be an open book to people. They're going to be someone who's going to think, and, and they're going to be very shrewd in how they do things. Does I, Yes, eye size tells us a huge amount, AJ. You guys want to know about eyes all of a sudden, huh? Um, we actually... Okay, Leslie's saying diastema refers to a gap or space between the teeth, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Donna. Those indicate extra jing. If you look at the, the, the lifestyles that they lead, they're very physical, and they're still very active, even in their 50s, 60s, and 70s, okay? Uh, there's a, I, I devoted a whole training, Jason, a whole certification class just to the eyes and the mouth, just so you know. Uh, was anybody on that training? Okay, Paul was. Yeah, okay. Excellent. Uh, I'm going to do some, I'm gonna a little product placement here. Okay, yeah, I wish. Well, stay tuned. We've got some opportunities coming up, Sandy. All right, so does, does everybody understand the three zones and why they're important? Cartilage removed from the upper nose to replace the tip. I'm going to say it's going to affect you, but I don't know how. 
Um, I can tell you that removing the bony parts of us, the, the, found, the, um, the substance parts of us is going to change you. What I, I, let me close the loop I opened earlier. What I have not seen is adding, well, the effect of adding stuff like tattoos or bo body piercings can change certain faculties. Um, we've seen people who've like had their tongue pierced and their bipolar goes away. People who've gotten uh, their, their eyebrow, a stud through their eyebrow, and they're, um, they stop being depressed. Uh, there's an old wives' tale that pirates used to uh, pierce their, their, their earlobe, and it would actually improve their eyesight depending on where they pierced it. Okay? Knee replacements. Again, anytime you're removing bone, you're removing jing. This is why if you're going to get a, something like a knee replacement, um, I recommend it be a last resort. That's why I'm such a big, by the way, that's why I'm such a big proponent of stem cells. Uh, because I think stem cells actually do the opposite. They help the body rebuild itself. Uh, and so uh, whenever it's appropriate for the patients, we offer here. Widow's Peak can be extra jing. What it generally means is um, they have an extra layer of charisma. They tend to be very, very charismatic. And the Chinese say if you have a Widow's Peak, um, You'll, you'll, if, you, if, you're, if, you're, if your spouse passes away, you can get, find another one very, very easily. So you're usually very, very popular uh, with members of the opposite sex. Uh, men, uh, the, correlate, the corollary to that is an M-shaped hairline. Now, here's the, here's the thing that you need to watch out when you have that extra charisma. Captain Jack Sparrow. What about Captain Jack? Um, when you have that extra jing and you're very attractive to the other opposite sex, it becomes even more important for you to be very good at selecting mates properly. And that's one of the problems is when you have those widow's peaks, um, you're like a moth to a flame in many cases. But if you don't have good selection criteria, if you don't understand how to choose a better mate, um, then you may wind up uh, getting a silk, uh, a, a sow's purse while you're looking for a sow's or for a silk, a sow's ear while you're looking for a silk purse. Does that make sense? Facial scars and cuts are usually not a good thing. Um, although sometimes, depending on how the how the scar is running, it, it it can affect you in a positive way. Widow's peak again is an extra level of charisma. Um, the Chinese call it peach luck. Uh, it can signal an extra reservoir of jing. And uh, it tends to make you a little bit more charismatic and attractive to the opposite sex. <laughs> it's, my, it's like you've been watching my whole life, Valerie says. Um, the nose, depending on where it's pierced, can, can affect the, uh, the stomach and it can affect the heart and the lungs, depending on where you've pierced it. Jowls in older people, um, again, depends on the kind of jowls. Are they getting false earth? Okay, the questions are getting a little crazy. Nostril size. Yes, they all get, they means everything means something. Okay. Nostril size usually relates to how rapidly you you spend money or energy. So if you've got big nostrils and a narrow bridge of your nose, watch out. You spend it faster than you get it. Acne, I'm not too I'm not too up on. Can't help you with that one, brother. Sir Snyder's asking, uh, perforated septum due to an infection. Uh, again, um, if it's damage to the jing of the body, then it's probably going to manifest in, in some kind of a, a loss of something. I want to learn the mate selection criteria. Okay. Well, if we're going to do that, then let's look at these things from the bottom top. Now, here's the first thing you want to understand about face reading for mate selection. And here it goes. You ready? Here's how you sum it up. Like equals like. What that means is when we're looking at someone's facial characteristics, if you have one or two, what the Chinese would, the Chinese matchmakers would look for, aside from all that astrological crap that they would, they would plug in, what they were looking for is similarities in facial traits. <clears throat> in other words, if you had a, if, if, if you had, if a, a potential mate had a nose very similar to yours, or cheekbones very similar to yours, the Chinese would consider that a good sign. High sex drive on the face is usually indicative in the jawline and in the, uh, in the eyebrows, okay? And in the lips. Big lips, big drive, okay? 
and full lower lips. Well, we, we, we want full lips all the way around, but if you got that full lower lip, this is somebody who really likes their, their physical side. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and uh, stay on track. Are we good with the three zones? Do we understand why this might be important? Okay. See, if you're if if you're data, if you're a very uh, knowledge oriented person, and the person you're looking at has a very pronounced jaw, and you're not very physical, is that a good match? What do you think? No, not really, right? Exactly. Now, when you look at the face, you have to look at the big picture. You have to look at not just one or two traits, but how the overall face kind of uh, integrates itself together or works together. So this is important. We understand the zones. When I teach face reading, this is what I, I, I everybody wants to talk about emotions, and we, we usually go there really, really quick. But we need to understand these three zones because when we're interacting with people, this tells us how to treat them. This tells us what kind of information to lead with, what to follow up with. And it's the sequence of these that give us uh, the debate to create maximum rapport and minimum time. Hold on a second. Uh, Sandy says, nope, nope, nope. I don't understand the question. Can two zones be on? Yes, in fact, they can. Uh, in fact, we want, and the, that rarely happens, but uh, ideally we want as symmetrical a face as we can get. The Chinese call us moving towards our original face. Um, but by and large, there won't be a completely a completely balanced face. One will slightly, although the subtlety, the, the degree of difference may change a lot depending on, um, you know, your, 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 your sensitivity and ability to uh, calibrate. Here's, here's the thing you want to understand about differences. Les, and I, it just brings you exactly to what Leslie got. Opposites attract but seldom stick. Okay? In my influence classes like Killer Influence and Rapid Attraction Secrets, um, even in CPI, one of the things that happens is when you look at somebody and you interact with them, if you've, do, if you've done the, the calibration exercises and trainings and body language reading skills that we teach in Killer Influence or CPI uh, or even uh, Rapid Attraction Secrets, you can tell exactly how to behave and how to speak to completely match a person's internal map of their ideal mate or their ideal business partner or their ideal coach or, or whatever. Here's the problem with that. The more you have to change what you do naturally to make to be get to get in a relationship or to attract someone, the longer and harder you're going to have to work to maintain that. So there was a, a dating coach by the name, I think her name was Annie, at the time it was Annie Lala, who went on, I believe, to marry Eben Pagan, the author of, a, otherwise known as David D'Angelo, who wrote a book called Double Your Dating. So two dating coaches got married. I find that kind of, a, kind of poetic. Um, and what Annie said, and again, I'm attributing it to Annie. Um, it could be somebody else, but I'm, that's what I remember. Relationships that work tend to work from the beginning. And that goes exactly to what we're talking about here. The more a person's values match the other person, the more a person's ma mannerisms match the other person, the more powerfully they'll connect. And if you get Lillian's book, Face Reading and Chinese Medicine, in the very first couple of chapters, she actually shows you pictures of people. And they show, she shows pictures of couples who've been together for 20, 30, 40 years. She goes, shows you pictures of them right at the start of their relationship and pictures of them 20, 30, 40 years down the line. And what you see is that they look alike. They actually look alike. And how many people you have ever seen who look like their pets? Type that in the chat. You ever seen somebody look, all of a sudden they look like their pets? It's because the face that we see, the, the body as we understand it, isn't solid. It's energy. And whether you, whether you believe in that or not, I really don't care. Uh, I've seen it over and over and over again. And vibration, and, and when I'm talking about energy, I'm talking about vibrations. And vibrations in proximity to each other seek common ground. They seek to entrain in some way. They seek to become more alike. And so uh, how many people have ever seen the metronome videos that I show in my, in my influence classes? Okay. 
If you haven't, go to, go to YouTube, type in metronome entrainment. You'll see uh, tables of 20, 30 vid, uh, metronomes all side by side. They're all moving at different speeds. And within two and a half minutes, they all start moving in synchronization. That's the effect of two people being in a relationship for 10, 20, 30 years. The more connected they become emotionally, the more their body and their facial features and characteristics start to train and train and become similar in some way. And that's exactly what the Chinese were teaching us in terms of matchmaking and sexual compatibility. If you have facial features that are similar, the, the, the chances of a greater long-term compatibility are better. Okay? Now, if you've got someone who's got a big-ass beak of a nose – and somebody's got a little tiny pug nose, does that mean they can't, they can't be compatible? Not necessarily. What, do the odds go up if, of them not being compatible? Possibly. There may be other things that resonate with these people, right? But in terms of what we understand in terms of the energetics of the face, in terms of how they work and how they merge in terms of uh, two people creating a family and, and moving on, uh, these are the things that we look at, okay? Um, I'm not going to go too far into it, but here is where we look at genital size. <laughs> um, and so I'll, I'll, I'll leave you guys hanging with that because I want to move on because I wanted you to make sure that we had, um, that we had uh, these three zones. So let's look at this now. I'm going to – oh, shit. Man, these are all messed up. Um, this is the emotional map of the face. Hold on a second. I got a lot of windows open, so I apologize. All right. So this is what everybody wanted to know about. These are the emotions that we look at. And this is especially important. It's harder to kiss with two big noses. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay. So can you guys see the, uh, the emotional map okay? I'll, let me close this one out. Okay. So we're going to start. We're going to do this like a clock face. And we're going to start up here with skepticism and joy. So skepticism can be seen in a wrinkle that contours the outside of the eyebrow. So when you see people with these lines, these are people that are not necessarily going to take what you say at face value. So if you lead with the fact that uh, you're probably not going to believe this, or uh, I know this is going to sound weird, but um, you know this is the data that supports what I'm about to tell you, uh, you're going to be able to to work with that that trait. It's a good trait to have because these people don't take these people aren't necessarily going to buy into what you say, or if you have them, it's a good self defense against people trying to sell you a you know a riverfront or a oceanfront property in Arizona. Yeah, mostly when you resting face. Some lines will come out only when uh, during the uh, the expression of certain emotions. By and large, I don't pay as much attention to those immediately. I want to look at what has been uh, predominantly imprinted on the face. And you know, a lot of people when they when they talk about face reading, they're talking about uh, they think of uh, what Paul Ekman's work, which I've talked about in other trainings about micro expressions. Micro expressions are momentary flashes of emotion that a person tries to conceal, usually in around the, the corners of the eyes, in the, in the brow line, uh, on the face or on the chin. These, are, these, these come and go in fractions of a second, and uh, their attempts at people, they, they're, they're, they're very transitory. That's not what we're doing here, although Ekman's work is very, very complementary to what we're learning here because what you're looking at in this map is the, uh, the result of a lifetime of microexpressions, an emotional life, how you've lived your emotional life. Now, uh, we, haven't, we talked a little bit about Jing earlier. Where's my – okay, let me uh, undo that real quick. We talked about Jing, and anytime you see lines that go across like this, these are blockages in the, what the Chinese call the river of life, okay? So anytime a, you have a scar that runs horizontally or a marking, it usually indicates a loss of jing in that area or a blockage to the flow of energy, and that's going to result in either um, personality characteristics being expressed or not expressed, or it may, it may actually signal some kind of uh, internal organ issues. 
but this is an important, let me, let me turn this, take this off real quick. Okay, so this is a good one to have. Uh, Logan is asking from St. Louis, in addition to reading our, our, our others, how do we work out the line and prints on our own face? By studying this map, okay, and understanding that the markings that you have are indications of emotions that have not been processed or a series of emotional experiences that have not that have been locked into the body and are causing issues. And as we resolve these issues, then uh, these markings will tend to diminish. Yes, Yakov, a horizontal scar on the tip of the nose can affect the heart or show heart trouble, but it doesn't necessarily have to affect the physical heart. The emotional, your emotional expressiveness is also a heart-related issue. It's seen in the eyes. We'll talk about, um, if we have time, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about the eye stuff. Okay. Uh, Leslie says, David, I had 40 years of sadness, grief, and loss, but show no signs of these lines. Is this because I spent most of the that time in my head and not in my body? Great question. Leslie, if there's a high degree of dissociation, there may be... Uh, that, that may lead to a lack of marking in the face. It'll also tend to lead to um, less affect or emotion as a whole being expressed in the face. However, Leslie, I get the impression that you've been working on yourself for a while. Is that true or not true? Twenty years of NLP. That may also be why you're not marking because you're dealing with your shit. Okay, and that goes back to the earlier question about how do we work on ourselves? You every morning when you get up, give yourself, you know, drink drink some water, you know, hydrate yourself really really well. Give yourself 20, 30, 40 minutes, maybe take your shower, and then go and look at your face. Look at where it's marked. Look at where the wrinkles and the lines are, and you'll get an accurate picture of what's going on in your body. You guys remember this picture? Oh, that's not the picture I'm looking for. Hold on a second. Uh, I'll, I'll come back to it. You guys remember the picture where I showed you the place. <clears throat> okay, so uh, what, some of the lines that we like to see are right at the corner of the eye, the one o'clock position. This is joy. These lines travel from the outer canthus and they go up, just like so. Okay, so these are the good lines that we want to have. Now, Let's jump right across to the 11 o'clock position. If those joy lines travel up past the eyebrow, you're no longer dealing with uh, healthy joy. What you're dealing with is what we consider pathological joy or mania and hyperactivity. Uh, we have a president who, has, uh, who is the poster child for this. That's why he's up at 3 o'clock in the morning uh, tweeting, right? Uh, it's not a it's not a a comment on his style of leading, but it is a comment on his health. Uh, will the replay be full? Uh, my intention is to make it full, Jeanette. Crow's feet. Yes. Now, um, are we are we good so far on joy and skepticism? Cool. All right. So let me go ahead and delete these, so we have a clear picture. Oops. Okay. The next line we want to look at starts once again at the, the outer canthus, and this begins to drift down. This is sadness. Okay. When you see, a, I see this a lot. I see, you know, I see this a lot in self-help people, which is, kind of interesting to me makes me think that maybe they're they're not living uh they're not clearing the stuff up that they need to clear but i see this a lot clinically i see this a lot in pretty much everyone people who have a lot have had a lot of sadness or a lot of grief or a lot of loss in their life will we'll mark these lines if the if the line starts to travel from the outer canthus down now you're looking at sorrow okay this is a deeper level of grief or sadness. Um, and again, this you may see this in, in times uh, when, when someone's just lost somebody, getting over a breakup. Um, usually there's, there's more loss here. 
when the when the when the line continues to travel down when the line continues to travel down now we're looking at grief and many times this is this is a, a deep level of trauma that has not been resolved um, either because they they tr they didn't give themselves adequate time to process it, which is very, very common in many of my clients and many of my patients, uh, because they set, people set an arbitrary time limit on how long the grieving process should take. And so many, and, and many times um, they, try to, they try to bullshit themselves and they stuff that energy down and it marks their face. So when, it, when you're in those moments of sadness and loss and grief, it's very, very important to give yourself enough time. So when we unpack those, then we, we can get, we can see those lines start to diminish very, very quickly. Uh, Tanya's asking, does the length of time apply to pain or unshed tears as well? Yes. Um, I see, I see a lot of unshed tears in kids who had, um, kids who had a, a rough childhood, very, very demanding parents, uh, parents who didn't give them enough uh, attention or love or positive strokes. I see a lot of that many times. Um, and again, it, it, it can happen because people set an arbit, you know, they either are not allowed to cry or they're, they're told big boys don't cry or, or something like that. Uh, unshed tears you're going to see more often than not. Uh, let me, let me mark this with, uh, with green in this area here, but that can also, that's a kidney area. So sometimes that can also be adrenal fatigue. If you've been working too much, uh, staying up too late, uh, you're having water metabolism issues, this area can get very puffy and discolored. So while it, and, and, and that can also lead to feelings of sadness or, or unshed tears as well. So when we see a, a puffy or, or discolored area uh, between those eyes, uh, some kind of kidney involvement. Okay. One of the lines I want you to pay really, really close attention to is this line that runs from the inner canthus and runs parallel to the grief and sorrow lines. This line is called a lost love line. This is one of the things that we deal with a lot in uh, when we do our golden path training because uh, golden path is, is a spiritual process by which a person can uncover their mission or purpose in this life, what they actually took on a body to come and do. And what happens many times as we move through the world, we encounter events or situations or circumstances where an activity that was fundamental to our sense of identity that brought us joy in the world was taken away from us, either uh, by force or by choice. Uh, the example I often use, and by, when I say lost love, it doesn't necessarily mean a person, although it can be, but many times it's an activity. Uh, let's say, for example, when you were a, a little girl or a little boy and you're 10, 15, 10 11, 12 years old, you loved riding horses. It, 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 when you saw a horse, when you had a chance to ride a horse, your entire being, your entire spirit came into your body and radiated out like, um, you know, like a beacon. And you just loved horses and you, you, you wanted to devote your life or a big part of your life to spending time with horses and riding and doing whatever it took to, to be with horses. And maybe five, six, seven years later, you meet a mate uh, or a, a partner who absolutely despises horses. Maybe they're allergic to horses. Maybe um, they want to move you across, you know, they want to move you to a place in the city where there are no horses. And because you love that person, you, you, you choose or, or you leave the horsemanship side of things to go with this person. That loss, that part of yourself that you've left behind or has been taken away from you will mark as a line here. So when you see those markings in people, you can know that some big part of who they were, some big part of their golden path that they loved, that, that made their heart sing, that brought them a ridiculous amount of joy was taken away from them in some way, either by choice or, or by, uh, you know, deliberate acts of other people. They no longer have that access to that anymore. And part of our job as face readers, part of our job as counselors and, and uh, healers is to remove the blockages 
that keep you from getting that from that, that caused you to lose that love in the first place and help you get it back to find some way to bring that love back into your life so you can be more fully on your golden path and fulfill your mission in this world. So these lines are very, very important when we look at people who have lived some, you know, have bounced from relationship to relationship or uh, from job to job to job. You'll see these lines a lot. Okay. Uh, how are we doing so far? Are we good or good? Type in the chat. Perfect. So let's look at what we've got so far. We've got skepticism. We've got joy. We've got sadness. We've got sorrow. We've got grief. We've got lost love. Another line that's going to be very important for therapists and coaches out there. By the way, um, those of you who are interested in mate selection, if you see someone with a lot of these lines, what should we do? Run. <laughs> That would, you know, as, as, as uncompassionate as it sounds, you're probably better off. Unpa yes, Logan, unpacking methods are like the gray room techniques. Coconut oil. <laughs> and here's my point. Depending on what your intention is for utilizing face reading and, and what your intentions are for this person will determine what you do when you see these markings. If you're a therapist, if you're a healer, if you're a counselor, Okay, then these give you an indicator of the kind of life this person has led, the kind of events that this person has uh, lived through. And it gives you a roadmap to follow in terms of what's most likely to come up when you start unpacking them. Now, the Chinese had their own way of unpacking these facial markings. They would literally force you to talk about, I noticed there's a beautiful, you have this beautiful jawline, but there's this mark that runs right down the side of your face that indicates that you've had some loss in your life, that there's some sadness that you've been holding on to. And what's interesting about when a, when a face reader looks at you in that way and starts to talk about that, the person who hears it starts to have an emotional response. They'll start to actually vibrationally and energetically process out that emotion and through talking about it and helping you work through it and reframing it, you can resolve that issue and the, and the lines will start to go away. Now, in Planet David, we have some very direct, very powerful ways to just completely unpack this and resolve it very, very quickly. Okay? So, um, and so when I look at these things, I, 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 you know, I can take two very different approaches. I can say point to where you feel it and I can resolve it that way. Or I can just have a conversation with the person about the markings on their face, and they will spontaneously start to, in, in, to use hypnosis terms, have an abreaction. And that abreaction will, and if we manage that abreaction effectively, we can actually help them uh, process out those negative emotions, and their lines will, will start to go away. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay, Leslie says, I left my heart in San Francisco, and I have lines in my Bay Area. <laughs> To what degree? Um, makeup can can obviously affect certain things, but a good face reader it won't it won't hinder. Ab reaction. Jason can talk to you infinitely about ab reactions. <laughs> All right. So we're good up through lost love. Yes. You got clotheslined by a face reader. There's a story there waiting to happen. How old does a person have to be to have all these lines? Well, I know people who are 100 years old. They don't have all these lines. You, a person won't have all these lines. They'll have the, the, the Chinese have a saying. Uh, you're never closest to your original face is when you're born. And by the time you're in your 50s, you've got the face you earned. So usually by the time you're 40s and 50s, the lifestyle you've led is, is, is clearly discernible on your face. Yeah, I've seen I've seen little children with some of these markings. Okay, um, that being said, it's very you got to be very careful when you read children because children are so impressionable. You know, uh, you you want to suggest things to children. You don't want to tell them you're this way. Uh, so Lillian actually tells us not to read people's fa young children's faces because they're so impressionable. And people tend, by the way, when you engage in a face reading process. The person you're reading becomes hyper suggestible to you. That's one of the magical aspects are the vibrational aspects of Chinese face reading. I've, I've, I've 
had certain things like that happen. I've literally walked up to somebody, looked at a notch in their ear, said, what happened when you were five? And the person had such a massive ab reaction. It took uh, one of my therapist uh, colleagues uh, like four hours to fix everything because that's the kind of processing that happens. I would have done it myself, but I was in the middle of teaching a class. So, uh, you know, if we, if, we, if we poke the bear, we're not going to leave you hanging. But understand that there's a very strong therapeutic component to these things. And if, you, if you're one of those special kind of stupid people and you know who you are, then you're going to open up some things and you've got to stay with that person. You've got to be with that person and hold that space for them and help them process through it. Okay. So is this useful? Okay. Excellent. All right. So let's look at uh, another line you want to pay attention to. Anytime you see lines that run diagonally along the bridge of the nose. These are what we call disempowerment lines. And disempowerment lines are lines that tell us at some point in this person's life, somebody crossed a boundary with them and they, they stood their ground and they pushed back, whether it was verbally, physically, emotionally, and, the, and, and they got so punished or so um, the retaliation for standing their ground was so extreme that they, they, they resorted to appeasement. In other words, they, they started looking for ways to, to mollify or pacify that other person. And in that process, they disempowered themselves. So I don't call these disempowerment lines. I call these appeasement lines because that's more of the behavior. This is somebody who tried to stand their ground. The pushback from them standing their ground was so strong that they, 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 they were willing to do anything to make the problem go away. And so they, they caved in and they did whatever they could to make that person happy. Okay. Um, so be very, very wary. I've seen lines, I've seen lines so deep on people with this that it looks like somebody took a razor knife or an exacto and literally just or a, a linoleum and just scored the inside of those eyebrows. When you see that, uh, you may also see this uh, actually, again, this is not 100, in fact, it's, take it with a very large grain of salt. In people who have been in oppressive religious communities, cults and stuff like that, you may see those. In abusive relationships, in childhood abuse with uh, narcissistic parents, uh, you may see these lines. Sandy says, so if you don't fight back and just go into appeasement, do you get those lines? You could, yes. That's usually what they're an indication of. It's usually not a once and done thing, but if the, if the event is, is traumatic enough, it can mark you that way. But usually it's a series of events that have happened. Morgan, uh, what if you see sadness lines that are interrupted and then begin again in the grief area? Uh, I would treat them as grief. Um, there may be a, a sadness combined with a grief. Uh, that's how I would interpret it. Other, other face readers may give you a different interpretation on that. Okay. Um, so looking at skepticism, looking at joy, looking at sadness, looking at sorrow, looking at grief, lost loves, disempowerment. Um, here's, here's your first assignment. What, David's giving us assignments? We actually have to go do work? Uh, yes, I want you to go out and start looking for people, looking at these people, right? Um, how does past life trauma manifest? Past life trauma will often manifest as a line or a wrinkle um, early on. Uh, many times what you'll get is generational trauma, uh, but they'll mark the same way that this life trauma will mark. Sir Snyder says, my purpose lines have gone and come, and I never believed it until now, right? Yeah, we'll talk about purpose lines. In fact, why don't we just go ahead and do that? We'll talk about purpose lines. Of all the markings that we have, some of the best lines to have are right here. They start at the uh, Alanazi, and they travel down this way. And these are called purpose lines. These, are, are, these manifest when you're engaged in activities and a lifestyle that is in harmony with the Taoists call your golden path. In other words, they're in harmony with your purpose or mission for taking on a body and being here. 
So the more you, the, these are lines you want to have. I know a lot of people like to Botox these out or get facelifts to try and make them go away. If the Chinese saw these markings on your face, they would be very happy for you because they would know that you're living the life you were meant to, to live. Leslie asks, how well do these correlate with Paul Ekman's seven universal emotions discussed contempt? Um, they correlate very well. But again, when we're, when we're looking at Ekman's work, you're looking at micro expressions. And these are, um, what we're looking at here are, long, are the long-term effects of those emotions. Oh, Maga says, oh my God, I developed these recently. Congratulations, you're, you're on the right path. Okay. So these are lines we like to have. But there are other lines that we want to look at with people. And so let's look at this. Let's go down here to humor. Humor is often seen by a little line that bisects the lower lip. So if you see someone with a line there, they either uh, have a very good sense of humor in terms of being able to tell jokes, or as is often the case, um, they, they understand jokes. They, they enjoy laughing. So this is a good thing to have. Well, Morgan, it really depends on how fast you've lost the weight. <laughs> okay, if you've lost like 60 pounds overnight, maybe. Um, another line that we want to look at and this is one I'm gonna, you're going to see a lot of here. This is called over-nurturing. When you see these lines, this is somebody who can be a helicopter parent. This is somebody who is spending an inordinate amount of time taking care of other people. They're, giving, they're doing too much for other people, and it's draining them. Okay. It could be um, because they're like a showbiz mom or dad and they're just are uh, you know one of those one of those parents who are living vicariously through their kids and they're just giving so much of themselves and their energy uh, to the other person. Or it could be somebody who has a very demanding parent or, uh, or, or child and the person is just sucking the life out of them. They're just giving and giving and giving and they're not getting anything in return. It's a one-way street. Um, there is no line outside the purpose line. Unless you're talking about here, which is more of a, a long line. One second. Are we good so far? Exactly like here. Now, many times when this line shows up, you'll also see over a long period of time, this line. And these are bitterness lines. Bitterness is anger turned inward. Not like depression, although depression can be part of it. Bitterness happens when a person is forced into a situation that they see, you know, the, people aren't living, people aren't keeping their promises. They're giving more than they're getting. They're perceiving that they're, they're not getting, they're not getting what they're, what there's their due, so to speak. And they internalize that. You see this a lot in cancer patients. Um, and it becomes, they internalize that bitterness and it goes into their organs and they start to manifest cancers and tumors and things like that. Okay. So I often see these and these happening together. Okay. But there's a lot of, it starts as resentment and disappointment. You know, the, if you want to look at, if, this is how I look at the etiology of this. It starts as over nurturing. And, there, and people oftentimes, when they, they start to nurture, there's an expectation, either spoken or not, that the person they're nurturing is going to return or show gratitude in some way. And over a period of time, that doesn't happen. And so they start to become very resentful. And that resentment often translates into bitterness. At some point, they realize that no matter how much they give, it's never, the, the amount they give is never going to come back. They begin, begin to internalize those feelings, and it, it turns into bitterness. Does that make sense? But there's also disappointment, and that's what we're going to talk about next. Disappointment is seen at the corner. Um, I mean, let me erase some of this. Okay. So you can see disappointment if you, if you find the corner of the mouth. Let me make this bigger or not. Hold on a second. Okay. Now, let me clarify 
we're going to talk about, um, you're going to see people in the world that have these lines. This is a wrinkle. Okay, let's be very clear. This the disappointment line is a wrinkle that extends from the corner of the mouth down. It should not be confused with a what, what the, we call a downturned mouth. Okay, when we're talking about disappointment, it's a wrinkle. When the mouth turns down, you're looking at somebody who has a little bit more disappointment or not, but a little bit more of a pessimistic view of the world. Um, and depending on the size of their mouth, there can be other things that are going along with that. But as a rule, if it's a wrinkle and it's going down, you're looking at people who've experienced a lot of disappointment in their life, people who've made a lot of promises uh, and didn't keep them, people who've tried to, to you know go for the brass ring in some way and didn't get it and and it marks them it marks them with that that wrinkle at the corner of the mouth peter's asking what about the straight horizontal line at the corner of the eye a straight horizontal line i have never seen i've rarely seen one usually when you when you have a line at the corner of the eye is it when we look at the eye, I don't know if I can do this very, very well here. If we take a, if we move right across the line of the pupils, if the line, even if it's straight, if it's above that that canthic line, it we'll, we'll, we'll classify it as joy. If it's below it, we'll classify it as sadness. I haven't seen that many, so I I got to be honest, I don't actually know. I don't know if if we would rate. I don't know if it's different, um, and it's certainly not in any of the books that I have. Well, the question becomes, Susan, so Susan asks, how does that all re this relate to smokers who have always have lots of lines? Well, first of all, smoking is a toxin, which damages your jing. The second reason is very few people smoke for no reason. Most people smoke as a way to relax, either mentally or physically. They look at it as a way to um, break their state. So usually what you're going to see in people who smoke, they may have these lines, and the smoking is the way that they deal with it with the emotional ramifications of these lines. So there's, in, in that case, it's a coping mechanism. And of course, breathing you know toxins in your body doesn't help either. Wrinkles. Uh, Stephen Parker says, uh, wrinkles in lines passing through lung territory could be indicative of cancer. Usually it has to be something a little bit more pronounced than just a wrinkle. Uh, what you, when you see cancer, you're going to see discolorations of the skin. One of the things that we look for, uh, let me go back to, I'll, I'll, I'll just pull this up real quick. See if I can find it for you. Here it is. See, I have all these notes from our previous training. I'm just pulling them out as I need them. Oops. When you look at a face, there's a bunch of colors you can see. Okay, white energies or white spots is on the face show places where a person's energy has been frozen. Red indicates inflammation or toxified trauma, heat or inflammation. Dampness uh, is some kind of a, a fluid accumulation. And purple or green means that there's stuck energy. So usually uh, the Chinese call tumors or cancers blood stagnation. Blood stagnation is always a combination of, of purplish green and usually heat. So if you're done, if, and again, if they have these colorations, it doesn't mean they have cancer yet. But it does mean that there's something going on and it probably needs to be looked at from a Chinese medical diagnostic perspective. And there will be psycho-emotional ramifications of that. Brown discolorations are usually pretty close to uh, purple or green. So I would consider those um, uh, blood stagnation of some kind. Could also be yellow, which is also from, no problem. Um, so if there are lines, it's a sign of unresolved emotions or traumas. In many cases, yes. In many cases, yes, Sandy. Any Lala facts were good notes to have. Okay, purple eyelids. 
Same idea. Go back to your colors. Purple equals what? Stagnation, right? Um, the color the colorations themselves are pretty consistent. So once you understand the coloration aspect and you look at the, the facial location and you go back, let me see if I can pull this up again real quick. Um, no, that's not working. I don't know. You go back to our facial map. We show the lung, the kidney, the spleen, the pancreas. You can start to get a pretty good idea of what's going on in, in the body. Okay. Well, as Steve, as a rule, Chinese medicine has a much better um, early warning system inherent in it than allopathic medicine. Um, Chinese medicine is capable of detecting patterns of potential illness long before they manifest as a confirmed pathology on a, on a Western diagnostic test. And so that's why it's very important to understand the pattern recognition aspect of Chinese medicine. Your body is always communicating. It, your body doesn't speak English. It doesn't speak Chinese. It doesn't speak Latvian. It doesn't speak Spanish or Outer Mongolian. It speaks in the language of symptomology. It speaks in the language of metaphor and sensation and coloration. And once you understand how to read that map, then you can interpret what the body's trying to tell you. This goes back to in our in our other class where we talked about pointing to where you feel it and 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 this that and um, really uh, being able to extrapolate um, what emotions are locked there. No, I haven't covered that yet. Do you guys want me to do you want me to uh, we'll cover that in a minute, but it's not it doesn't become nearly as relevant until you understand these ma these markings. So are we good with skepticism through uh, purpose? Yes or no? Okay. Your, goal, your assignment, by the way, is to go out and look at people and talk to them about these lines. Now, don't walk up to them and say, you've had a lot of grief in your life, haven't you? <laughs> Not a good approach, okay? You might say something like, hey, I, I, you know what? You have a beautiful jawline. I love how your jaw is just so strong. And I noticed you have some markings. I just took a face reading class, and so people's faces are really jumping out at me. And I noticed that uh, you have a, a line that runs down the side of your face, and that tells us that sometimes people experience a loss or a grief that they've been holding on to they haven't quite gotten over yet. And uh, and I was wondering, is 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 that true? You know, and you'll see it in their face before they speak. Um, we'll see about that, about printouts and stuff like that. Okay. Um, but you, you want to be very – when, when you start talking about emotions on people's faces, I'm giving you these things as a way to interpret and understand yourself as well as um, to learn how to be more compassionate with other people. You know, in our influence classes, we're going to show you step by step how to work with these markings and these cues so that you can help people become the best version of themselves and to get them to voluntarily and joyfully do what you want them to do. Um, there's a lot of power here, but you have to be respectful of the power that you have. People are going to become very, very suggestible to you when you start doing this. Okay. Actually, um, there are certain – Jeanette, Jeanette asked, can TCM Gua Sha uh, remove these lines from the emotional baggage? There are facelift applications that use a lot of Gua Sha. Uh, I see it in a lot of the Thai massage places that are using aesthetic massage and things like that. Um, there is facial acupuncture, which can simultaneously um, modify the face as well as process, process out emotions. <laughs> Sandy's like, oh, yeah, that's what I'm here for. Let's get to controlling people. Well, remember, anytime you can peel back a person's emotional masks, they become open to your influence. So what are you seeing here? You're seeing their emotional masks, aren't you? And you can peel back the things that are, are going on. Vertical line on cheek, not near the mouth. Uh, it could be a dimple. Could be a, it could be a sign of uh, Jing deficiency in the lung area. Powerful. Uh, Jerry, Jerry asks, I have a coworker that has cancer. What part of, uh, of her face should I look at? Uh, ask, depends on where the cancer is. The cancer will manifest in the body location that, is cor that correlates to the anatomical location. Uh, what about facial paralysis? The Chinese call that wind. In, in Chinese medicine, and it's usually um, an indication of liver issues or stroke. Compassion is at the core of everything I do, but I like to call what we do um, intelligent and tactical compassion. 
the Buddhists used to say there's, there's two kinds of compassion. There's stupid compassion and intelligent compassion. Stupid compassion is you see a beggar on the street and you hand him some money. The Buddhists would call that stupid compassion. Why? Because you haven't done anything to change that person's life. You've just enabled them. Yes, they can eat for a day, but tomorrow they'll be back. An hour from now, they'll be back begging on the street. Intelligent compassion is taking a different approach and finding a way to get somebody to empower themselves and leave them empowered as a result of having met you. And so many times, um, the intelligent, compassionate way is to, come, kind of to sometimes be a bit of a dickhead. And I say that with, with true compassion. Um, but there are people out there who will take the power inherent in, these, in this system, and they'll use it selfishly. And I can't control that, but karma is a bitch, and I have her phone number. So be very wary of that. Okay? But there's no need. If you're following the systems that we teach and the protocols that we espouse, there's never any, any need to be evil. There's no need to lie or cheat or steal. You can move through the world and be a factor for good and get everything you want, and you can get on your path. Is there a way to tell from a face that a person is an a-hole? With a tongue-in-cheek, I'm going to say no. Um, because everybody ha can have asshole traits. It's how they manifest and when they use them that, that is important. Um, you can see people who have a higher asshole quotient in them by looking at their jaw lines, their cheekbones, and um, their chins, really. <laughs> okay. Um, go back, Richard, go back and look at my head movements as I'm saying that. Okay. Um. <clears throat> okay, so are we having fun so far? Is this, is this useful? Dimples are usually a sign of extra fire and extra jing. So that usually makes you a little bit more playful, more charismatic. Cupid's bow is my favorite tool for that. Loving it. Fun and fun and respecting. Okay, very cool. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to finish a few more. And uh, how many of you would like to take this even further? Yes or yes? You guys are asking some great questions. Cool. So if it's okay with you, I'm going to I'm going to do a couple more um, a couple more traits, and then I'm going to jump to some things we've got coming up. I'll explain them to you. I'll give you a chance to to think about what's best for you. Is Dallas still have room? I believe we have about seven seats left, Laura. Um, but we haven't started promoting it hard yet, and they always fill up at the last minute. So if you're serious about it, um, by all means, uh, consider coming in. And what, what Laura's talking about, but I'll just jump to it real quick. What Laura's talking about, uh, you, you may have heard me mention uh, this thing called the golden path. Where is it? Okay, there we go. And, and what the golden path is, is this a way, f you know, how many, how, many of, how many of you have ever said this? How many of you have ever, whether by yourself or with a coach or a therapist or, or just in the, in, the, in the quiet of your house, why am I here for? What, I, I know in my heart I, was, I, 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 was, I came here to do something important. I came here, there's a reason for the things in my life. I just got to find out what it is. How many of you have ever had that experience? Maybe you've had clients who've had that experience. What's my purpose for being here? Right? The Taoists had a word for that. They called it your mandate from heaven. And what they meant was that every human being who takes on a body, every human being who takes on a body came, comes in with a mission to fulfill and a set of traits and qualities and attributes that are designed to help them facilitate that. And so the Taoists say you, you're, the face you have before you take on a body is called your original face. And the actual calligraphy for Taoism, the ancient symbol of Taoism, is actually a face running on a path. That's literally what the Tao means, a face running on a path. And so what they said is when you come into this world, 
you're never as close to your original face as you'll ever be. And your mission in this life is to get on your golden path so you can return to your original face. It means you move from a, you're, you're, you, I, I'm, my, my, okay. Thanks for this, Rob. Rob is asking, David, please define translate comes in with a body. I'm going to go out on a limb here and, and extrapolate that the vast majority of us believe that we are more than our physical body. Would that be true or not true? Real quick. Okay. That aspect of yourself that existed before you took on a body is known as your original face or your true self, your divine self. And you take on to come in, you come into this life and you take on a body to fulfill a purpose. Now, that non local, non physical part of you, the Chinese call Shen. Shen literally means spirit. And it comes into your body and it, and it houses in the heart and then it disseminates energies to all the other organs. And that's why you have different types of spirits that reside in the body. And they all sow through the eyes. So, your spiritual mission or your mandate from heaven, the mission you decided you were going to fulfill with the body you currently have is called your mandate from heaven. The, the process of fulfilling that mandate from heaven is called the golden path. And what happens to you alchemically when you get on that path is your body starts to become younger. You're, you start to have more successes in your life. Serendipitous events start to manifest more quickly for you. And that's what most people are, are feeling in this life is they come in and they have this event happen and they have that experience happen and they're, and, they're, and they're asking themselves, what is all this mean? What is this all for? And the Taoist said that mission, that mandate from heaven and the qualities and the characteristics and the attributes that you, you have to bring are on your face. They're marked in the structures and the configurations of your face. Your shen, your spirit, that divine aspect of yourself, is larger than your body. And so what happens is when the body is happy, when the body is experiencing joy and passion and freedom, more of your spirit comes into the body. And because – are you guys familiar with the term neg or entropy? You guys familiar with that term? And if you're not, I'll explain it. Entropy is another word of, way of saying chaos, of something that is very organized becoming disorganized. Well, your shen or your spirit is the opposite of that. It's negative entropy. In other words, the more of your spirit that comes into your body, the healthier your body becomes and the longer you live. But through trauma, negative events, negative emotions, losses, being, you know, buying into other people's belief systems about what makes us happy instead of following our own internal guidance. We deviate from our path. We, we deviate, deviate away from the things that actually bring us joy, and the body becomes less positive. And so less and less of the spirit is willing to come in. You see this a lot. Shen and Kundalini are, are, have a lot in common, uh, but there's a little bit more to it than that. Um, and without getting off on too many tangents. Anyway, the whole idea is when you're Shen, you've all had these experiences. Have you ever seen somebody who's like down in the dumps or just, you know, basically neutral and all of a sudden they get to do something that they they always love to do and their whole face just lightens up and beams and radiates energy? Have you ever seen that? Yes, sir. If you've seen that, what you have seen is the person's spirit entering their body. Conversely, many of you who are coaches or therapists, you've seen people whose eyes are flat, their, their faces are dull. These are people who have dissociated or disidentified from their body. Their spirit isn't there. Nobody's home. Your job as a face reader, therapeutically or on your golden path, is to bring that spirit back into the body, to get, your, get the person back to the activities and the qualities and the characteristics and the attributes that they came in to use. And as a byproduct of that, the Shen comes into the body. The body gets healthier. Their luck improves. Everything gets better. It doesn't mean they won't have tough spots. All the life experiences that they've had are useful. And that's the golden path.
Okay. And it brings you back to your original face and you'll get these really cool purpose lines and your body will get younger and you'll live longer. So um, I think it was Leslie was asked, or was it, was it Leslie or Lisa? Anyway, Leslie was asking about uh, if, if there were seats left in Dallas on uh, Dece- on March 27th through the 29th, we are hosting a limited, a limited engagement golden path workshop in Dallas, Texas. Um, you can go to, uh, let me see if I can cut and paste this link in the chat box for you guys. Here's the page. I don't want to spend too much time on it because it was not really um, where I wanted to go. But since they brought it up, I decided to talk about it. So as face readers, what we are is Shen chasers. Our job, whether as a compassionate therapist or I call it compassionate provocation, is to poke the bear of 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 our clients, have them process their stuff so more Shen comes into the body. Okay. Does that make sense? That's how we heal people uh, from a face reading perspective. Now we can do that with our hypnotherapy too, as well. Okay. Sandy, what don't you get? Okay, cool. Oh, Laura, thank you. All right. So, um, so let me go ahead and, and talk about a few more lines that I think are really cool. If you're one of those people who has these little wrinkles, I don't know if you can see my face. I have them little lines right in front of your head here, right in front of your ear. These are called auditory intuition lines. Can I, Samo asks, can you please tell me more about healing the face? What specifically about healing the face, Samo? (laughs) How does poking the bear compare to poking the lizard? Well, I guess it really depends on what you mean by lizard, Susan. If people who have these lines have what we call auditory intuition, and what that usually indicates is somebody who grew up in a very not always safe environment. In other words, the, peop- the, the person around them had to ask or had to constantly pay attention to how they talk to people, how to read between the lines and listen between the lines of the people so they didn't inadvertently say the wrong thing. They became very, very hypervigilant in terms of listening to how people speak. They have very good bullshit detectors. You see this a lot in lawyers therapists, uh, con artists. <laughs> um, Logan asks, when ears are connected at the lobes, indicate something. Yes, it's strong connection, positive or negative to family, immediate family. Yes, yeah, Susan, if someone grew up in like an alcoholic family and the person had to watch what they said at any given moment and be able to kind of read people by how they spoke or the tonalities that they used, they'll tend to develop these lines. They're very good bullshit detectors. Well, a good listener is usually indicated by how far the ears, let me show you this, by how far the ears stick out from the, uh, from the face. If they're very flat, the person can hear a lot of stuff and be very open and egalitarian. The more the ears kind of flare out, the more selective the listener is. So you got to look for that. Okay. It, again, you notice how all these things, when you start to combine them, um, you can start to extrapolate. Right. So people and uh, on a health issue, people who have one second, people who have these lines, they also tend on a, on a, from a health perspective, they also tend to run a little bit towards dehydration. So be very, be very weary um, that you stay, you drink enough water if you have those lines. OK. Um, another another health line that we want to talk about, and I have these, too, so you can see them very, very well on me. If you have, if if you look at the earlobe, and let me let me draw this for you. Let's see if I can draw this for you. Okay. So you have an earlobe, and if you look at the earlobe and you see these little lines or wrinkles right in the lobe of the ear, this tends to indicate um, blood pressure irregularity. Now, people with this. But this, and I have them, so I, I know them very well. Tanya, there's a significance to everything. <laughs> Whether I know the significance or not is a different issue. Usually, if you've, if you've unpacked what's behind the line, the line begins to fade and go away. But this is something you want to watch out for. Um, 
because this person can have high blood pressure, they could have low blood pressure, they could have erratic blood pressure. And what this also tends to indicate is that these people have a tend of a little bit of a neurological overreaction to things. Somebody jumps out at them and the average person would have like a seven startle response. This person might jump right to a nine. And so emotional issues or emotional stuff can be uh, can cause them to have nosebleeds when they get stressed uh, or their blood pressure, go, you know, those kinds of things. So when you see that, uh, you really want to have that person pay attention to their, their cardiovascular system and their cardiovascular health a little bit. Okay. Okay. So if that's okay, uh, I'd like to tell you what I've got for you, you guys for staying on for the webinar, and then we'll come back to some more stuff. Is that okay? Okay. So many of you know that when I when I put programs together, I try to figure out I try to figure out what's going to give the biggest bang for your buck. And people always ask me, they always ask me, David, uh, I see there's a video course on this, that, or the other thing on my web, on your website. And there's also a live training scheduled a, the month at, a month from now. Which do you think is better for me? And without hesitation, without fail, I always say, come to the live events first. Because at the live events, you literally have me looking over your shoulder, installing these things in you, making sure you can do the work. And then you take the videos and you go and you learn from the videos as a study guide. So if you, so for based on what I'm teaching you, um, this is what I put together for you. Okay, uh, I put together a few packages that I think people really like, and uh, you can tell me which ones you like best, and go from there. So here's what we've got. This is this is a, a really cool package we put together. This is called the Know Thyself package, and the way this works is this is uh, our Secrets of Face Reading Home Study course. It's a $997 value, and you'll get everything that we've talked about plus a whole lot more stuff. Uh, in fact, in this one, I actually teach very specific exercises for unpacking the, the markings in the face. Uh, you're also going to get our Identity by Design Hypnotherapy Certification course. This is a program that will actually works in harmony with, with, uh, with this course that allows you to uh, systematically remove uh, negativity from people's uh, past. It allows you to reprogram their future, to remove the voices in their head that are constantly criticizing them. It allows you to systematically install the traits, qualities, characteristics, and attributes of people that you admire uh, and install them in yourself. It also allows you, uh, we also help you, we're going to include our lie to me if you dare. This is how to catch liars. This is a course that we create. For some reason, this is getting very wonky. I've, I've never gotten along with uh with one note, but anyway, lie to me if you dare is a why the heck is that happening? Um, is our course that we do? It's it's got it's got the Hanson 15, which are 15 traits for catching liars. It teaches you the the basics of kinesic interview and interrogation, and how to spot people who are fibbing to you. Uh, in Chinese in Chinese face reading, we actually have a uh, in our Shen course we actually show you how to catch liars by the Shen fluctuation, the light in their eyes changes, um, as well as their facial expressions change. So you can read a person's Shen and know when they're lying. OK, uh, we're also going to include because Chinese face reading is a vibrational um, or an energetic phenomenon. We're going to include our vibrational healing system. This is our complete advanced course on vibrational healing. It teaches you everything from how to use the Bankston method and image cycling to how to remote view, remote influence and remote heal. And we're also going to and that's a fourteen hundred ninety seven dollar value. And you, you actually need this to use this. So there's a, a, actually a, a continuum that we put with this that allows us to rep, um, repeatedly um, give you the biggest bang for your buck. We're also going to include our, our training on body language and nonverbal communication. It's called People Reading for Fun and Profit. And this is going to talk about posture for eventual orientation, large stances versus close stances. Um, we're going to talk about... Um, pupil dilation, how to tell people like you, how, how, how intimate people are. I believe this also goes through the seven body language stages of mating. So people are asking about sex and dating and attraction. Uh, what we include in, in, in uh, the, the People Reading for Fun and Profit series is uh, a snapshot into what we call the mating dance, which are the seven discrete body language phases that people go through. Uh, when they're moving from stranger to intimacy, I like to call it the one plus one equals three scenario. So 
um, you'll be able to know to look at any couple at any given moment and know exactly what phase of the process they're in. And if you're engaged in these processes as a male or female or whatever, um, you'll know exactly what to do at what given moment. There's seven discrete body language phases in that process. And it doesn't matter if you're in Papua New Guinea or you're in um, you know, Australia or, or Scandinavia. These universal body language phases are universal. Just like you know, Ekman's uh, face reading or uh, micro expressions were fairly universal based on his studies, these positions are very, very powerful in terms of speed reading dynamic relationships and people moving towards intimacy. What's the best course to keep the intimacy in a 20-year marriage? That one is actually going to be course B, but I'll get to that in just a moment. Okay, um, It's a $997 value. If you were to go to the website and buy each of these, this is what you would have to pay. Actually, we've raised the price, so it's actually more than this. And what I recommend for people, um, we're gonna, we, we have a VIP ticket offer that we, uh, we're going to talk about in a minute. Uh, and it, it also comes with a VIP ticket. I recommend uh, taking our Golden Work Path workshop in Dallas. So not only will you get the three-day training where we'll literally walk you through all the stages of your life and interpret uh, your face at each, each level of your life. We'll help you unpack your qualities, your characteristics, your traits, your attributes that you've inherited from your mother and your father's lineage. We'll help you to isolate and remove the blocks to your success all in a three-day period. You get that in conjunction to all these amazing videos that you get to take home. We do not release videos of the Golden Path, by the way. Uh, and one of the reasons for that is, is because there's privacy issues. Each person that comes to Golden Path is going to get a personal reading from me as part of their workshop. And so because there's a lot of personal stuff that's brought out in those Golden Path workshops, while we do record them, we never release them. So if you were looking for some face time with me for any reason, you want to find out what your mission in this life is, where you were on track, where you were off, and how to remove the blocks to success and get back on that path, this is probably the best package for you. It's a, a $2,250 value. Um, if you were to add all this up, it actually uh, the total package price for this exceeds $7,000. $35. Now, for those of you who have a, a, a bigger interest in love or attraction applications, we have a slightly different package that we would recommend for you. Um, was that was that Know Yourself package useful? Is that interesting? Yes or yes? Does VIP? Yes, it does, Shane. Um, in fact, let me let me explain the VIP tickets for you really quick. Okay, if we scroll down here real quick. For anybody who jumps on one of our packages, we're going to include as an extra bonus a VIP ticket. These prices need to be changed because we've raised them. Um, <clears throat> and, and what this is, is if you, if, you, if you drive any one of these packages, you can get a VIP ticket to our Golden Path Workshop. You, or you can get a VIP ticket to Killer Influence. And the next one will be July. See, I haven't updated all this stuff. It's totally organic. July 2020, we have an Identity by Design class coming up next month. We also have one in Brisbane, Australia, and Las Vegas. You can use your VIP ticket for any of those. Okay? <clears throat> um, so, yeah, here, and here you see it. Any, any, any training in our 2020 calendar. Do you travel to Canada? I'll be in Canada in October, girl. in Toronto, in fact, uh, for those of you who are interested. Washington, D.C. event is Identity by Design. We have like four white Identity by Designs this year. Um, would it be useful for me to go through our catalog before I go through the offers? What, would you want, what do you want me to go through first in terms of offers? And, do you want the calendar first or do you want the, the offers? Because basically anything in our calendar you can use your VIP ticket for, with very few exceptions. Offers and calendar. Okay, that sounds like a plan. So let's look at the speed reading people for love, sex, and romance. I like this course, but it's, it has a very, a very intimate application. So it's going to start once again with our Secrets of Face Reading Home Study course. And this is once again how to look at people's faces, look at their shapes, look at their contours, look at their wrinkles, look at their trauma history, and extrapolate from them how who's going to be compatible for you you're going to see you're going to be able to find their trauma issues you're going to find if they're headstrong stubborn
good with money, bad with money, uh, whether they have a, a good future ahead of them. Those kinds of things are all going to be, and you're also going to learn very powerful tools for helping them clear their shit. Actually, you should be focusing on clearing your shit, not clearing other people, uh, your, uh, your loved one's shit. Um, if you're already in a relationship with somebody and you want to clear their shit, that's one thing. But if you're looking for a mate and they've already got lots of shit, unless you want to be pigeonholed into the role of a therapist, you might want to reconsider moving forward with that relationship. Uh, Dan, is there a live event teaching remote influence, drawing customers from the universe? That would be vibrational influence, Dan. That would be vibrational influence. Okay. Uh, and we're going to include in this package, Secrets of Face Reading Home Study Course, $997 value. We're going to include People Reading for Fun and Profit. That's a $497 value. We're going to include our Speed Attraction Course, which might, might complete from stranger to intimacy, how to do it uh, in, real, in the real world to, be, to custom design and the relationships that you want. It's $1,497 value. Uh, we're going to include a special version, a co-ed class I did called Real World Romance. Uh, where we unpack a lot of the romantic strategies for men and women. We're going to also include our unlimited lover process, which is my particular system for creating intense, sensual, sexual, intimate, ongoing, ever-increasing pleasure in a sexual relationship. It's designed to, to teach you how to be your partner's ideal lover from the moment you're together, or even if you've been together 20 years, and feed them back their own internal love map and build on that so that every time you make love to that person, they become even more fulfilled. Each time you make love, it'll be better than the time before because it literally takes you, teaches you the physical techniques to do that, the psychology behind it, and specific ways to leverage the natural energetic trance states in lovemaking so that people become empowered sensually and sexually, both in terms of, like, we had one lady who, who volunteered to be our, our assistant for the class. At the end of the class, she looked at the entire class and with the biggest smile on her face said, I don't need men anymore. Because not only did she learn how to tap into her own pleasure responses, she developed control over them. And she could literally give them, give control of that ability to pl please her and satisfy her to anyone she wanted who proved worthy and take it back at any given moment. She learned how to utilize her own ongoing trance state and sensual trance states to uh, program her own mind for increasing success in other areas. So it was a very empowering experience for us. A limited lover teaches you how to be that. Okay. Killer influence secrets of covert hypnosis is for anybody who wants to influence people. Um, in any context, uh, but it te teaches you more than just languaging. It teaches you the nonverbal, physical things that you can do. Yeah, mine went, hold on a second. Let me see what, uh, what went on here. The end of the class. Okay, so if you look at everything that we're offering in the love, sex, and romance category, we're also teaching, again, once again, because, you know, men and women lie in romance re relationships, we're going to include the, uh, the lie to me if you dare course. Okay, how to catch liars in the art of deception detection. So if you look at everything in the love, sex, and romance package, um, you get the secrets of face reading home study course valued at $997. People reading for fun and profit valued at $497. Speed attraction, rapid attraction secrets for mating, dating, and relating is $1,497 value. Real World Romance, which is a powerful co-ed course that we taught. Unlimited Lover, which teaches you how to be any human being's ideal lover the first time you're together and then takes you beyond it. Okay, uh, Really powerful. I've only taught this, that course twice in my life. I doubt I'll ever teach it again because uh, I really, really pulled back the curtain on some high-level uh, sensual energetics and lovemaking technologies. So if you're really serious about putting the spark back in a relationship, um, Speed Attraction and Unlimited Lover will be the courses that do it for you. Uh, okay. And finally, uh, Killer Influence Secrets of Covert Hypnosis, which is a $997 value. Well, you have to wear vests are optional, but if you wear a vest, I will give you a $300 gift certificate towards any product on my website just for wearing a vest. But you got to wear it the entire training. Okay, And finally, we're going to comp conclude with uh, lie to me if you dare. How to catch liars in the art of deception detection. Believe it or not, uh, when you look at our YouTube channel, the most popular video on our YouTube channel is how to catch liars. So you know what? We're going to do some special stuff just on lie detection 
um, at our next face reading certification as well. So um, what do you think of that package? Does you think it's a, for those of you who are interested in essential applications, is that, you think that would be useful? Yes or yes? Yeah. If you were to try to buy each of these courses on the website, you would, you'd be looking at in excess of, hold on a second. Six thousand four hundred eighty-two bucks. And finally, uh, for those of you who have more of a business application, like if you're a personal injury attorneys, uh, mediators, uh, consultants, analysts, right? <laughs> the, uh, this is our business face-to-face -face face reading for strategic leadership and influence package. These are these things are also, believe it or not, very very applicable to dating and romance. But this is more for the nuts and bolts applications outside of it. We're going to start once again with the Secrets of Face Reading Home Study Course, which is $997. We are people reading for fun and profit valued at 400, wait a minute, $497. We're going to include the Stealth CPI Level 1 class, which is uh, what we'll be teaching up in Toronto in October live and in person. So if you're if you're interested in getting this course and you, you're eligible for the VIP ticket, you might want to use that VIP ticket to jump into the Toronto training. Uh, but we also have other trainings coming up and I'll go over those uh, after we uh, we go through the packages and some of the bone, the VIP tickets. Uh, we're going to include in, in that a, a very special program called Stealth Selling Secrets. Stealth Selling Secrets is all about frame control and what we call criterion values elicitation. In this course, we literally had a guy, uh, I tell this story a lot, um, he, he did not believe anything we were teaching. He came in, he was the biggest skeptic on the planet. He was in pharmaceutical sales of all things. And uh, I'll, I'll preface what I'm about to say with the, uh, he had the worst outsourcing luck of anybody I'd ever met. Uh, but he came in and he battled us on every single point we were teaching. And when you watch this video, what you'll see is we literally use the techniques that we're teaching to beat him into philosophical submission. By the end of the training, he was like, okay, I get it, it works. And what's interesting is he took the training from Stealth Selling Secrets, he took it back to his job, and he started his sales started to just magnify. Unfortunately for him, in conjunction with his sales going up, the company was going through some kind of a reorganization. I'm not sure if they uh, were going through a bankruptcy, if they were being acquired by another company, but he was like the low man on the totem pole, and he got bounced. He just got he got laid off. He used the techniques in Stealth Selling Secrets to get hired. Like in two weeks, he got hired by another company, and he started climbing up the ranks again. And again, we have to work on this guy's sorting criteria because once again, like a couple of months in, the company went through a, re a reorganization. He got bounced again. And he got another job again in two weeks. He became such an advocate for the power of the, the – it's called the interview crusher that you learn in Stealth Selling Street. He became such an advocate for this process that when he came back to subsequent trainings, every time we got to the point where we were going to teach this particular technique – how many of you guys remember uh, a, a television show called Welcome Back, Cotter back in the 70s? You guys are probably too young to remember those. But there was a show called Welcome Back, Cotter. Remember, guy, remember that, that character, Horshack? Anytime the, the teacher asked a question and he, and he had the answer, he would go, oh, 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 and he would jump. That was this guy. Every time we got to the point where we were going to teach criteria and values of elicitation and how it works for controlling frames, he'd be all over the place. And he would beg. He would beg to get up in front of the audience and teach this. And he would literally sell people their own pens, you know, just to prove how powerful it was. Right? He became... Well, you can go back and find the reruns. Um, he became and, and he became such an he 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 had he, he generated so much trust in this method that he gave up pharmaceutical sales entirely, and he became a coach because he realized that he was safe no matter what happened. That he could get clients using this process, and if and if it did, if for some reason it didn't work out, and he needed to get another job, he could get a job like that using these processes. And I've seen people literally get hired, beg to be hired by companies that they didn't even qualify to be hired by. So you don't need to, to resort to that level to get this to work. It works really well. Um, and you don't need to lie to, to, for it to work, but it's about tapping into a people's emotional triggers and hot buttons and linking them in a very profound way to you. So that's included in this course. And if you understand how to read people's faces and how to read their shin, 
and you know if they're data driven or they're practical or they're instinctive, you can see how these might merge together so you know how to present yourself in the best way possible to get your point across. We're also going to include in this course uh, CPI Level 2, which is all about the power of strategic story and metaphor creation. The most powerful influence tool on the planet is stories and metaphors. When, when you hear the words, let me tell you a story, the hemispheres of your brain literally start to synchronize with the person telling the story. And the longer you're engaged in the story, the more rapidly you start, your brain starts to change and your perceptions and, and attitudes and belief systems start to change to be in alignment with the story automatically. In this particular, you need to have CPI 1 to understand CPI 2, okay, because everything in CPI 2 is built on this. But we'll show you all the different kinds of stories to tell, how to tell stories that cause you to connect with people, how to tell stories that eliminate resistance to the influence you're trying to wield, how to tell stories that amplify the persuasive impact of the messages. These are available in the store, but they're significantly higher priced in the store tell you a story. We, um, you'll also learn um, stories, or what we call ninja stories, which is how to use stories as a delivery mechanism for embedded commands, analog markings, quotes, all the, all the stuff that you see NLP practitioners and public speakers do on stage that have them screaming and running to the back of the room to buy your product or service. We're going to teach you systematically how to do all that how to create stories that make people neurologically primed to want whatever you're offering. So it's a very powerful, very, uh, very easy to use system, but it's based on the CPI 1 level, which is why we included it here. We're also going to teach you uh, rapid resistance removal, which is CPI level 3. CPI level 3 is we call this renegade reframing. This is the art of conversational belief change and overcoming objections. Uh, actually, Jason, if you come to Las Vegas for HypnoThoughts, I'm doing a four-hour class on uh, NLP for profits, on copywriting secrets, utilizing NLP and many of the technologies in rapid resistance or uh, CPI3 and CPI2. They've given me a four-hour breakout to teach that. So uh, if you're coming to, uh, to Vegas, I'm actually going to teach a class on it. I'd like to do a three-day workshop on it, um, but we don't have time in the 2020 calendar. Maybe in 2021 we'll do that. Okay, and of course, and and now think about this for a moment. What if, if you let's say you're in a sales uh, con, uh, context, or you're in a mediation context, or maybe you're just trying to get someone to want to go out with you, or there's something you want them to do that they don't want to do. Is there anything for the ones that are not able to come to you? If you can't come to me, Jerry, then I recommend that you util you get the videos and then utilize that VIP ticket when you have uh, an availability for it. Uh, the VIP tickets don't expire. Once you have them and you're in our system, you have it until you use it. So literally, if it takes you two years to get to a live event, then uh, it's waiting for you when you get there. Okay? So imagine, what, imagine if you had at least 14 different ways or 14 different answers to any objection or belief that somebody asked you. That's what rapid resistance removal and reframing and belief change do. This gives you the ability to reframe a person's belief, their way of thinking, during normal conversations to change beliefs 14 different ways for any different belief that you're, 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 you encounter, you have ways to change it. This is amazingly, and, and um, in fact, I, I, I should offer it with, the, uh, with our regular face reading course. This is how my teacher Lillian actually creates a lot of the change work with her clients is because when she pokes the bear, so to speak, when she finds a facial marking that uh, she wants to help the person process, she'll start asking questions that make him think or her think about it. And her job is to get them to vent the emotions connected to it and then help them reframe their, their, their perception of the experience to something that's more positive and more useful. And that's what that's their, her primary intervention. Yes, Shane, killer influence will give the prerequisites for CPI two and three. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, so, if you want to be a face reader, or a conversational hypnotist, or a therapist, or a coach, or a mediator, or a negotiator, 
then this is one of the this is one of the trainings that you absolutely have to have because this allows you to bypass or overcome objections to reframe limiting beliefs and you can even use it on yourself that's one of the things that's really cool if you find a belief that a limiting belief that you have if you write it out and then utilizing one of these 14 patterns you write different answers to that belief you'll find that at some point your belief will change one of those patterns or combinations of those patterns will start to change your limiting beliefs. So it's a great way to do self-work internally. It wasn't my original, I didn't originally design it for that. That was one of the extra bonuses that I discovered you could do when I started putting this together for you. Okay. And of course, because people are always lying to you in the business world, we're going to include a copy of Lie to Me If You Dare, How to Catch Liars and Detect Deception. Is this useful? Total value, if you were going to try to get this on the website, would be $6,982. Okay. So those are three offers. You get to pick one. And the best part is, for those of you who are on the webinar who've stuck it out, you can have your choice of any package, A, B, or C, for one low installment of just $997. Or you can do three easy installments of 397 if you register before the end of tonight's class. So, um, Henry, can we put some of the links for the people? Uh, is, is Stephanie online with us now? It's up now. Perfect. So you get to choose. I, I, it, it's you know I, you get to ask me anything you want, and included with any of the, these packages, if you sign up before, and this is only for the end of the webinar tonight, you get your choice. You have a VIP ticket for any single live event during our 2020 calendar, okay? Um, this is only available until I log off the webinar tonight or 10 p.m., whichever comes first, okay? Um, my recommendations for the packages above is for the, the Understand Yourself package, which is you know, secrets of face reading valued at $997, identity by design valued at $1497, lie to me if you dare, $97, vibrational healing, $1497, people reading for fun and profit, $997. Uh, I recommend the Golden Path VIP ticket. If you're interested in the uh, speed reading for love, sex, and romance pro uh, program, I highly recommend you jump on the, um, the Killer Influence training. In, in July of 2020. This is a four-day intensive. It'll bring all the, the, the various, it'll bring all, and all the various video courses together in a cohesive way, and you'll be able to decide, once you have that foundation, exactly which videos you want to get in what order you want to get them, okay? Um, we have four Identity by Design classes scheduled throughout 2020. We have one coming up next month here in San Diego. We have one in Las Vegas. We have one in uh, Washington, D.C. Um, we do not have one in Brisbane. We have a regression training and a CPI training scheduled in Brisbane, but you can use the VIP ticket for that. Um, do you have any questions about this before I go over the events calendar? Because there may be something else that you want. When is the great sex course? You know, Rebecca, I got to be honest. I, I get a little bit nervous every time I teach that course uh, because it's such a controversial course. And when I tried to market these courses way back in the day, um, the, 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 the Internet gods were always trying to lump the information I was trying to teach in with porn and adult websites and stuff like that. And it was really frustrating to me. So in order to keep my word, I taught the class twice. I videotaped it. And refresh your screen. And mine went black too. So Henry, can we do something about that? I'm, I'm going to try to refresh my page. If I lose you, just hold on. I will be back. Okay, are we back? Can everybody see me okay? All right, good. Cool, all right. So I'm not against doing it, but I need to, I need to see a lot of, 
I, I need to see a lot of commitment from my students to do that class again. I'm not, I'm, I'm not against doing it, but um, uh, Shane is saying the links are gone. Okay. So Chris is asking, what is the best way to help someone who feels asexual and wants to unleash and create their and create their sexual desire? Chris, the first thing I would do is I would start with identity by design or self mastery supercharger, um, and then I would transition them into um, I would transition them into probably the love, sex, and desire package. Um, your your the person you're seeking to work with is probably going to need the benefit of some one on one sessions. Um, I know a lot of you guys are, are chronic do it or consummate do it yourselfers. And by the way, the VIP tickets only for like the I'm gonna I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna change it to the first 15 people. No, let's do that. Let's do 25. First 25 people to register are gonna get that VIP ticket. Okay. Um, oh, pardon me while I change the type size. Oops. I really hate when uh, my font size changes. All right, that's good enough. All right, so anyway, you get your choice. If you look at the if you look at the prices or the the value, you know you, the, the the understand yourself package, seven thousand thirty five dollars. All you can get it all for one low installment of nine ninety seven or just three ninety seven. If you're one of the first twenty five people to jump on this, then. Uh, you're going to get your you're you're going to get a VIP ticket. You get to choose which of the courses you want to throw in there as a live event. Um, the nice thing about the VIP ticket, once again, is they do not expire. The price point of the training doesn't matter. So if let's say you get your VIP ticket now, and for some reason you can't get to a training until 2022, well, all you got to do is pick up the phone, give us a call, let Stephanie know, and they will move you to the next class. Oh, uh, le Rebecca, let me get right back to that, okay? Um, if something comes up at the last minute that you can't come to a training, pick up the phone, let us know, we'll move you to another event. Once you have your VIP ticket, you have it until you use it. And you don't even need to pick what training you want to use it for. As long as you're in the system and registered as having a VIP ticket holder slot, you can use it for just about any training. If a training that you want to come to has a prerequisite, then you have to satisfy that prerequisite first before you can come to that event. Um, with very few exceptions, that is the, the you know the only one. Uh, our, our extended classes, any class that goes over over eight days, um, usually counts as two slot. Uh, well, never mind. That's a different program. Don't worry about it. Anyway, uh, Stephanie can help you with that. But uh, I'm going to go through our event calendar in just a moment. Then I'm going to circle back to uh, more face reading stuff. But I wanted you guys to know what we have, the offer that I have for you. And uh, hopefully you guys will make, make the best decisions and decide where you're going to see me next and all that cool stuff. So getting back to Rebecca, um, I, I, I'm willing to do the, the sexuality classes if I get enough committed um, interest from, from my students. Uh, I'm not against doing it. I just, um, there's a line that you get really close to when you start teaching sensuality and sexuality information. And I love teaching it. I think it's one of the most important uh, skills for both men and women to have, both in terms of being able to satisfy their lovers, but also in under, to understand how the other, the other gender works. And it doesn't matter if you're, uh, you know, heterosexual or, or uh, you know, bisexual, uh, homosexual, I don't, it doesn't matter. The, the dynamics are largely the same. And so this class is something that can be very much a co-ed, although I will admit, I will admit that it, a lot of women voice interest in it. I'm going to be upfront with you. This is what has happened in the past. A lot of women voice interest in this class, but it's only the men who show up. And that's, that's, you know, that's disappointing for me because I really believe that both genders would benefit from being in a sensuality class and experiencing and getting feedback from the other sides. I try to do is that's fine. When I teach erotic hypnosis, like when I go out in Vegas, yeah, like at HTL, uh, when I go out to Vegas, the only time I'll teach erotic hypnosis is when I have a co-ed class. I will not teach to all men. I will not teach to all women uh, because by and large, these skill sets are things that require a certain kind of environment and a certain kind of um, openness to. 
So if you guys want to do that class, I have the curriculum. I, I could teach it with my eyes closed. It has changed the course of my life and it'll change the course of yours. If you have a relationship that's kind of gotten dull or kind of the, the spark's gone out or the person you, you're with isn't the person you married, you know what I mean? Um, these are ways that you can rapidly bring that, that chemistry and that connection and that pleasure back into, into your life. So I'm more than willing to do it. But like I said, advertising it generally to the general public, it's, it's problematic because it, it, it sends up a lot of red flags and a lot of people's filters, uh, like the Google and YouTube and things like that. But I'm happy to do it if people really want to know how to do that. Is that useful, Rebecca? Yes or yes? Did I lose you again? Okay. All right. So let me go ahead. I promised you guys. Okay. Uh, let me, I promised you guys I would jump to the events calendar so you guys know what's coming up. So I'll go through this really, really quick. Uh, next week, or not next week, but the week after, we're doing a, a special event here in uh, San Diego. It's the HypnoThoughts Platinum. I'm, uh, I'll be teaching alongside five other of the world's best speakers in hypnosis, some of the people on the leading edge. Uh, if you are a trained hypnotist or coach and want to take your professional career further faster, I recommend you come out. We're also offering a free bonus day before the event where it's just me and you for six hours where we go and uh, have a group class based on the things you actually want to learn. So the day before the event, you'll come in on February 27th at the Doubletree, and I'll literally go around the room and I'll ask, what do you want to learn? What do you want to learn? Dave, what do you learn? Be uh, G, what do you want to learn? Rebecca, what do you want to learn? And we'll create that lesson plan on the spot. And for the next six hours, eight hours, we'll drill you on those skills so you can do them in your sleep. The following day, we'll be at the uh, Paradise Point Resort for three days of advanced hypnosis and hypnotherapy training, both in terms of business building, as well as my approach to therapy and hypnoenergetics. Melissa Tears will be there. Kelly Woods will be there. Uh, Ken Gutzo will be there. Jason Lynette and Steve Rehm, all teaching their specialties. So if it's something that uh, – if you're really serious about this connection, Alexandra, if you uh, go ahead, uh, Henry, can you or Brandon uh, type in the link so Alexandra can grab one of the packages? You can use your VIP ticket for this. I don't recommend it. Um, coming up March 3rd through the 7th here in San Diego is our, our Real World Hypnosis Identity by Design training. It's here in San Diego. And this, again, is our uh, – I don't know what it is about this class, but for some serious reason, people come in knowing nothing, and they come out literally unstoppable. We have students that literally hypnotize people right next to jackhammers in the middle of hotel lobbies undergoing renovations, and they're completely successful. This particular class, if you're what I like to call a serious or a special kind of stupid, is the, is, is the course where you learn how to systematically remove negativity that people don't even know they have, how to remove uh, issues that are holding you back, how to reprogram uh, your past so when you look back on the past you only remember it in ways that make your life better how to eliminate that critical voice inside your head so that it builds you up instead of tearing you down all the time how to install the traits qualities characteristics and attributes of people whose skill sets you admire so that you can custom design your own identity uh, that's going to be march 3rd through the 7th here in san diego if that's too short a notice we do have a course coming up. It's a four-day condensed version in Las Vegas. Of course, in Dallas, December or March 27th through the 29th, we'll be doing our face reading secret, class, uh, Secrets of the Golden Path. Um, again, if you're interested in finding your path and getting on your mission, this is something you might want to jump into. Um, we're going to be having a three-day master class here in April. April 16th through the 20th. It's a five-day event. It's CPI 1 and CPI 3. So if you're interested, if, if you, you're looking at the business package and you uh, a lot of those things resonated with you, use your VIP ticket to, to get the, the, the CPI master class. You'll get the live training, and then you can go back and you can supplement your face reading, your video courses with the, the skill sets you've gotten from the live event. And this, once again, is where we teach you CPI 1 and then systematically teach you the 14 ways to conversationally reframe and change beliefs and overcome objections in everyday conversations. And it will help you in everything from the boardroom, the classroom, the treatment room to the bedroom. Um, very, very powerful stuff. I do not teach it lightly. Um, uh, so if, if having the ability to win any argument 
and get people to believe anything you want is important to you, uh, this is something you might want to consider. And once again, that's April 16th to the 20th here in San Diego. It's be at the Doubletree downtown. For those of you who are a real special kind of stupid, uh, in Brisbane, Australia, May 4th through the 8th, we are doing real-world hypnosis, rapid trauma release, and deep healing five-day hypnotherapy certification. This is, this is where you go after identity by design. If you are truly committed to being a healer, to helping people overcome addictions, post-traumatic stress disorder, terminal and chronic illness, to eliminate fears and phobias, um, and then just go even deeper, then this is the training you want to have. I highly, highly recommend that you at the very least have the Identity by Design videos if you're going to jump into this class. I would much prefer that you have the Identity by Design five-day training before you jump into this class, but we can work if you've got at least the foundations of Identity by Design, okay? Um, but this is heavy-duty stuff. This is the stuff I've been using clinically for 15 years to reverse cancers, to um, you know, eliminate scoli not eliminate the pain from scoliosis to eliminate herpes outbreaks and chronic uh, lung issues and and all forms of PTSD. Everything from rape trauma to sexual abuse to uh, personality or multiple personality disorders. These are the things I've been using. This class only progresses at the speed that you can demonstrate competency with the material. So by the time you get out, oh, I've worked with shooting victims. Yes, Susan. Several, as a matter of fact. Uh, I've worked with homicide detectives. I've worked with rabbis. Um, yeah. So this is something, once again, it's not for the faint of heart. So if you're really ready, <clears throat> if you're really ready to jump into the deep end of the therapy, this is where you go next. Um, we have a com, uh, and we're going to, uh, the week after that, May 11th through the 16th, we're doing a CPI super hypnotic persuasion intensive. This one's a little bit different. Because what we're doing in this one is we're teaching all of CPI 3, we're teaching one or two modules from CPI 2, and one or two modules from CPI 3. So it's not the full CPI 2 or CPI 3, it's selected modules. So if you want kind of a, a buffet or a sample platter of what the other courses do, and you want the opportunity to work hands-on and really get a, a real-world ability to utilize these skills, then this is probably a good training for you to jump into. You don't need any prerequisites for this. You can jump right in and, uh, and, and get some very powerful hypnotic influence skills. We do have a combo package. If you want to jump into uh, real world trauma and uh, the CPI six day super hypnotic persuasion intensive, uh, I believe the combined package well ask Stephanie about the combined package because I, I know there's a combined price for that. I think it's like 3500 us for for both um and if you have a vip ticket you can use it for one of them so that's a big a big savings right there uh coming up in july we have killer influence secrets of covert hypnotic influence four-day certification boot camp that's july 15th through the 18th here in san diego and this once again and this one is going to be a little bit special in that i'm going to be showing uh, a, a set of skill sets i call Yes, there's two different Brisbane trainings, Shane. One is on therapy and one is on uh, pers conversational persuasion and influence techniques or conversational hypnosis. You can use conversational hypnosis for therapy, but this class is taught as a an influence training that you can graft or, or in transplant into a therapeutic application or a teaching application or a sales application. So it's not the CPI class is not specifically about therapy, but it can be used for therapy. July 15th to the 18th, uh, we'll be doing a Defense Against the Dark Arts training, which is all of our killer influence trainings on influence, as well as modules on how to protect yourself from social predators, con men, human traffickers, um, narcissists, sociopaths, those kinds of things. There are certain key uh, behavioral characteristics, certain uh, attributes that they all share. We'll show you their tactics. We'll teach you how they work. We'll teach you how to spot them. And most importantly, we'll teach you how to never be a victim again. So uh, I, I, I highly, highly recommend that you only take this class, um, Defense Against the Dark Arts 2 didn't receive an email. We haven't started promoting that one yet. So that might be why. Um, this is a very powerful class. Uh, if you're prone to delusions, 
or hallucinations, don't take this class. Um, this, we try to keep this, as pos this class as positive as possible, but we are talking about some pretty intense topics. And so um, only take this class if you're sane. If, you, if you're not sane, please avoid this class, okay? Um, coming up in uh, August 2020, we have a 10-day super mega hypnosis training package. And uh, what this is, this will be at the Orleans Hotel and Casino. <laughs> um, and what this is, is August 10th through the 13th, we'll be teaching a four-day identity by design hypnotherapy and hypnosis certification intensive. It's the entire five-day curriculum that you would get in if you came to San Diego, but we're going to do it in four days. So look for long and very long days and very intense training. Okay, it's a $2,250 value. Then there's going to be three days, August 14th through the 16th of the HypnoThoughts Live Hypnosis Convention. I'll be teaching at least three classes during the convention, one of which is uh, Neurohypnotic Copywriting Secrets, NLP for Profit, how to utilize, how to write copy that, that sucks people in and makes people want to buy your product or service, uh, how to integrate NLP techniques, how copywriters do what they do. Uh, and as far as I'm concerned, the most powerful copywriters in print or the most powerful hypnotists in print are direct response copywriters. They've been plying this trade and, and, and getting people to take positive actions long before the internet, long before <clears throat> any form of, you know, click to, to sign up type stuff ever happened. They are the most powerful, most emotional based writers, next to romance writers that there are. We'll give you a, a snapshot into how they do what they do, the mindset, the NLP bells and whistles that carry, give you the biggest bang for your buck. We're also going to teach, uh, I think, uh, instant conversational hypnosis. And I think we're also doing... Um, there's one other class that we're doing. Stephanie, do you remember what other class we're doing there? Plus, you'll be surrounded by some of the biggest names in the hypnosis world, literally hundreds of presenters. Uh, and we are the top, we are usually voted the top presenter every year. So, and I often uh, ha spend a lot of time hanging out with my peeps who sign up and come out. So, um, come on out. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I always try to, anytime I find a room that's not being used, I try to do hidden classes and secret classes. So, Oh, uh, AJ's asking, hey, how did your vote as an influencer go this year? Ladies and gentlemen, thanks to your support and your, your, your ongoing love, I am happy to say that NLP Power and David Snyder has been named the number one NLP trainer of the year by globalgurus.org. We beat out the founders. We beat out some of the biggest names in the world. And I have no one to thank for it but all of you. And that's one of the reasons why I do this 10-day special event. You guys did it, not me. I just showed – I'm just a dude in a vest. It was your support, your love, your votes that did it. And together we're going to change the world. I, I really believe that, starting with yours, right? I think – to bring the most good to the world, you start. You have to start by making your world the best it can be first. <laughs> as powerful as my vest. What's the one price for the HTL package? The one price for the HTL package, believe it or not, is a wonderful. Where is it? Hold on. It's. It should be fourteen hundred ninety-seven. Oh, I'm sorry. No. It's twenty-two. It's twenty two fifty right now. Twenty two fifty. Um, for something like this, re yeah, what we can what we can do is we can we can give you a special price that includes the VIP ticket or works with the VIP ticket. Uh, so you can use it towards a uh, you can use it towards either the the the, the five. I didn't I didn't finish. You guys keep distracting me. I didn't get to chain tell you the rest of what's going on here. Hold on a second. Um, the way the VIP tickets work with the, uh, the, the HypnoThoughts package is you can use the VIP ticket towards one training, or you can just buy the, the training package by itself. Um, each of these by itself is $2,250, right? Um, so during the convention, you'll get to meet some of the best trainers in the world. Um, three days after the convention, August 17th through the 19th, I am doing a three-day face reading certification. So Literally, if you want to learn how to do face reading the way I teach it, if you want to be able to unpack people's personalities, temperaments, attitudes, attributes, this is the training you want. 
Oh, nuts. I'm so sorry for this. I do not know what's going on, guys. I really don't. I thought we had all the bugs worked out. Um, let me see if I can get it back real quick. Is it retrograde? Seriously? Oh, man. I hate retrograde. Oh, it's back on now. Okay. Okay, so let me tell you a little bit more about this package. This is one of the reasons why we're, we, we, we're using it separately from, um, from, the, from the one we just talked about. Because in, uh, in addition to the, you get the, the four-day identity by design pre-conference, you get the three days of the hypnosis convention. You get full access. It includes lunch. You get the three-day face reading certification. And we include with this package a special video bonus training archive. Let me explain to you what this is. The way this works, I have been teaching at HypnoThoughts Live, both pre and post and during the conference, since 2009, I think almost 10, about 10 years now that I've been doing this. I have videotaped or recorded every single training I've ever done there. <laughs> Sorry about that. Guy. Try refreshing your screen, see what happens again. And what I've done is I've taken all of those videos, both the, the during conferences, the post conferences, the pre conferences, and I've literally them on a website. of high level training on everything from erotic hypnosis to identity by design and personality transformation to face reading to conversational hypnosis to how to be lucky, uh, how to read people, how to catch lies. Um, it's, it's just a massive, massive package, literally hundreds of hours of, of content that you can binge watch to your heart's content. It's part of this package. So for those of you who are interested in that and you um, talk, reach out to Stephanie, at, let me do this real quick. Um, so you can reach out to Stephanie at nlppower.com, or you can call her directly at 858-282-4663, and she can walk you through. Um, no, it's still on. Refresh your, re refresh your, your uh, screen, Tanya. Okay. And the nice thing about most of these videos, guys, is they've never been released anywhere else. You won't find them, the vast majority of them on YouTube. You won't find them in the Mastermind archives. You'll only find them in this bonus package. So um, not only do you get 10 days of intense one-on-one -on -one training with me, you're going to get hundreds of hours of videos that you can watch absolutely free um, instantly. It's they're all they're all digital downloads, so you can. By the way, they're big files, so have a lot of space on your hard drive uh, if you're going to do that. So, um, is everybody clear on the super mega bonus training packages and stuff like that? Yeah, you're going to need it. You're going to need it. Okay, I don't understand that because I don't I don't know where that's coming from. But anyway, okay, cool. All right, so um, let me finish the calendar, and then we'll go back to more face reading stuff. Oops, looks like okay. All right, Google's Google's playing tricks with me here, and I'm not sure why. You guys okay? Hold on a second. Okay, cool. All right, let me see if I can get my, my Google page back now. For some reason, Google, oops. Did I just, am I still logged in? 
Hold on. Uh oh. All right. Something something weird is going on here with with my Google. Um, I'm gonna have to X out of this screen. I, I'm afraid that my my you know what my screen is locking up. So here's what I'm gonna do. Rather than risk um, getting bumped out. Oh, here we go. Okay. Okay. No, nope, that's not working. All right. So are we good? If my camera's up to eye level, I don't, what are you talking about, Ray? Are you, are, you just, are you tired of looking up my nose? Is that what's going on? Okay. So let me get back to this. Okay, so people were asking about must be Mercury retrograde. Okay. So let's go back. So I think we've covered HT Live. Um, August 17th to August 19th. We talked about that already. Um, and by the way, any of the, th no, he's not. <laughs> uh, by the way, um, the identity by design class and the face reading class, you can use those as separate from the, the bonus package we just talked about. You can get the all inclusive 10 day, or you can use your VIP ticket for just the face reading or just the identity by design. Uh, we're finalizing this right now. We're working on an eight-day NLP certification in the United Kingdom. The tentative dates are September 20th through the 27th. Um, as of right now, it's, we're looking at not being at, we're not going to be in Peterborough. We're probably going to be in Coventry uh, once we get those pictures signed up. And we'll go from there. Um, Ray, I would do that, but I don't have, I'm already wasting enough time with all the, the technical snafus and stuff like that. Um, I'm sorry if you don't approve of my, my upward gazing camera, but we're going to stick with it for now. Um, so this is an eight day NLP training and, uh, we'll be covering everything that society requires. Uh, these are long days. It's not for the faint of heart. Um, everybody is welcome. I highly recommend that you some, you have some level of, uh, facility with hypnosis before jumping in. Um, this will be in the United Kingdom. You can apply your VIP ticket uh, towards this if, if you have the prerequisites. Uh, this is one of the classes that does have a pre you know, um, that does have uh, certain limitations applied to it. So reach out to Stephanie about that if, uh, if you have questions about our NLP certification. Coming up in Toronto, some people were saying about me coming to Toronto. I will be uh, hosted by uh, Mas uh, Mike Mandel, the world's greatest uh, Canadian hypnotist. Up in uh, Toronto, we'll be there October 24th through the 26th. I'll be teaching CPI level one, and uh, plus some extras. I may add a few. I may add one or two modules from some of the other uh, trainings, but depending on how fast we go through that, um, we have a self-defense training that we do. It's uh, where we kind of bring out all the, all the self-defense stuff that I do in my martial arts, and that's the self-defense secrets of internal, internal power three-day personal protection boot camp. And then finally, uh, finishing up uh, 2020. We have Real World Hypnosis Identity by Design, another five-day event. I highly recommend if you have a desire to help people uh, therapeutically in terms of coaching, mentoring, um, that you jump into this class first and then move on to, um, then move on to um, like Identity by Design or, or what have you. So that's our event calendar. And you can find that for those of you who want to go back. And you don't have to pick a class right now for those of you who want to find that. You can, here's the link for that. Okay. 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 So that's what I've got for you. Just a, a quick reminder, then we're going to go back. So we have three packages. It's your choice. You have the Know Thyself package. You have the speed reading people for love, sex, and romance. Business face-to-face, -face, face reading for strategic leadership and influence. Each valued at over $6,000 to $7,000. Uh, and any one of these is, can be yours 
or one low installment of 997 or three easy payments of just 397 we can break that down for you and if you're one of the first 25 to register you'll get a, you'll qualify for a VIP ticket for any of our events in our 2020 calendar or we recommended any of these three to supplement your packages uh, and that offer is good until uh, February 28th at 10 p.m. Pacific time or the end of this webinar, whichever comes first. They should be in your members area on the NLP Power website, Jason. Jason was asking how do we access the bonuses and things like that. They should be in your members area. Okay, let's jump back up and talk about more face reading stuff. So we've talked about the three zones. We've talked about data-driven Someone who is data-driven has a bigger upper zone. Someone who has a bigger middle zone is more practical or pragmatic. Someone who is um, more earthy or more instinctive or, in, or uh, emotional will tend to have a larger lower zone. These people go with their gut. They'll do things because they love them, not because the facts support it. Um, and it's not one over the other. What you want to do when you, when you look at somebody's zones is you want to figure out what's the perfect algorithm. Are we staying on here until the 28th? Cool. <laughs> uh, no, we're not, Susan. <laughs> um, but what you want to look at when you look at somebody's faces is you want to look at the order of the – look gauge their faces by size. So if they're if – they let's just keep it simple. One, two, three. This zone was biggest. This one was second biggest. This one was third biggest. That would be the order of data that I would present. If someone has a big upper zone – a slightly smaller middle zone and then a big on a smaller chin, then I would present all the data first. I would tell them how they could use it. And then I would tell them why they're going to love it and how to go with their gut. If it was the inverse, if this area was bigger, this area was in the middle and this area was smaller, I would say, you're really going to love the, what I'm about to share with you. And this is why, all the reasons why you'll love it. It's going to do this for you. It's going to do this for you. It's going to do this for you. You're going to be able to do X, Y, and Z. People will do X because you know how to do this. And here's the data. Here's the proof that supports that. <clears throat> okay. Does that make sense? So when you, and that, that's why I taught you the three zones first, because when you look at somebody and you can extrapolate which zones are, you, you actually have an algorithm, a formula of, of how to present your information. Now, when you look at somebody there's something else you want to look at. In addition, well, let's look at the emotions first. The emotions are very important, but to really make the most of the emotions, you have to look at another aspect of the face, and that's the right side versus the left side. The right side of a person's face is their public persona. It's the face they show the world. It's the professional image they want you to have. Their left side is what they're like when the lights are off, when nobody's looking, when they're just around their most intimate companions, their family, their friends, when they're by themselves. The left side symbolizes who they are inside privately. When you present to people, it's, it's always true right. So you, they're right. So I'm, this is, from your perspective, this probably looks like my left, <laughs> but it's, it's always true right. Okay? And the way to remember that is you remember your right brain, your, the right side of your face is controlled by the left side of your body. I'm sorry, the right side of your face is controlled by the left brain, left hemisphere. The left side of your face is controlled by the right brain. So your internal emotional side, your, your more sensitive sides are going to be uh, in the left side. But when you present to people, uh, I probably will grow it back. I'm, in a, I'm in doing a big business deal right now, and I have to be clean shaven and present a prim and proper uh, image. So I may, I may get the scruff back after that. No visible nose. Thank you, Ray. It's nice to know I have no visible nose hair. Awesome. Um, I look fierce. <laughs> okay. So when you look at when now here, this is where it gets important. When you're presenting to somebody in a business context, okay, when you're presenting to somebody professionally, you present to their right face. You understand that? When you read some when you're when you're in a business context, you must Deal with the person as they want you to perceive them. If you peel back that persona, you peel back that, that mask, they start to feel vulnerable. They'll start to feel uh, threatened in some way. They'll get defensive. So you need to play to that person's public persona. Okay? So let's look at what we've got now just from understanding facial zones. 
The zones of the face tell you the order and sequence to present information to them. The sides of the face tell you what that person is like privately versus what that person is like uh, publicly. When you look at the, the, the lines of the face now, when you look at the lines of the face, are the lines deeper on their private side or their public side? Well, this, the phrase saving face comes from, the, from, the, from Asia, from, comes from the Orient. It's a very big thing. Okay? So let's say, and, and people were asking about eye size and ear size. Eye size matters. Eye shape matters. Every, I, I have, I, I, I literally, I taught a face reading certification last month. I literally spent two days on eyes, just on the eyes of the things you can unpack. Okay. Uh, and if you come to the face reading certifications in, uh, in Vegas, you'll, you'll learn all of that stuff. It's prepared, it's ready to go, and it's easy. Okay. But are the lines deeper on the right side or the left side? That's going to tell you where they're, where they're holding more stuff. Also, how open is the eye? How big is the eye on the right side versus the left side? A big round eye indicates somebody who's more open, more outgoing, more imaginative, more suggestible. A, a, a more narrowed eye, a, 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 a big eye held small, so you know somebody who's blocking, who's guarding, who's analyzing, who's more selective. They're going to be applying more analysis to the things that you say. They're going to be more defensive to the things that you say. They're more guarded. Are they more open on their public side or their private side? Look at their ears. Is an ear on one side bigger than the other one? That can tell you a lot about their risk-taking behavior, financially, physically. Okay? The bigger, generally speaking, the bigger a trait is, the better it is in terms of being able to receive or have more energy. The smaller, more narrow a trait, the more selective and precise and discriminating it is. And that's, that's a truism that you can that you can pretty much count on. Okay? Is this useful? Yes or yes? Okay. How I'm, I'm going to ask you guys a question now. How might this be useful? How might this be useful? Just type in a chat. Just type something. Job interviews? Yes, absolutely. Go on. Oh, shit, he's asking me questions. I wasn't expecting this. Dealing with family? Sure. Okay. Excellent. All right. So let me finish up the emotions, and I'm just going to take your questions for half hour, 45 minutes, and let you go. Is that okay? Politics? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So we talked about um, this is the line I want you to pay attention to. Business deals and politics. Absolutely. When someone's in physical or emotional pain, and it's usually chronic, you'll see lines that travel from the outer canthus towards the nose. They travel this way. Sad, uh, happiness and mania go up. Sadness goes down. Pain goes in. Pain goes in. I don't, believe it or not, even though I work in a chiropractic clinic, I don't see these a lot. But I have seen them. Um, when someone is actually in physical pain, they'll tend to be very prominent. But if you see these lines and they're not making an obvious face, you know, facial sign of pain, um, this is somebody who's been holding on to a lot of stuff that's, that's really hurting. They're really hurting inside. Okay. I'll see, I'll see what I can do, AJ. Uh, I think we talked about mania lines. Remember if the, if the joy lines starting at the outer canthus go up past the eyebrow? Now you're looking at uh, basically uh, uh, manic, uh, I'm sorry. What's the word I'm looking for? See my nose hairs? Uh, um, you're looking, it's mania, but I'm thinking of bipolar disorder, uh, manic depressive, that kind of stuff. Okay, it could just be mania. There are just manic people, but it it can be any of those. Manic street preachers. <laughs> yes, 
um, transformation lines. This is a line that, that I've actually got one. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. But when you see a line that runs diagonally upward like this, this is somebody who's gone through a very deep, dark night of the soul and emerged from it with some form of, of enlightenment or epiphany or life-changing wisdom, I guess is a good word. Um, these are lines we want to have. Um, I was taught when I was getting trained by Lillian, uh, she, was, she was talking about the Dalai Lama. And there's a, there's a facial characteristic known as Buddha wings. And Buddha wings start from the third eye and they kind of, they kind of flare up like this. And Lillian was telling me that if you watch the Dalai Lama, when he's teaching, he has these beautiful Buddha lines or Buddha wing lines that, that come up. And when he stops teaching and he's just dealing with people, you know, backstage or in a crowd or what have you, these lines aren't as prevalent. These lines aren't as prevalent. So um, they, and I think that, and I believe they start with this whole, this, these transformation lines. But when you've gone through a long, dark night of the soul, um, you'll see this, this wrinkle that runs vertically. Well, we're not really talk Rebecca, we're not talking about veins so much as wrinkles again. A lot of this class is about wrinkles. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm going to save the, that, the irritation and annoyance lines for last because there's such a deep well of stuff here. When we look at face reading, this area, hold on a second. This area, that eyebrow, that forehead eyebrow, eye, eye, eye ridge is such an important area. When you see somebody who has these double lines like this, what you're seeing are annoyance or impatience lines right now because I'm dealing with wonky internet. Uh, plus, I have a family so, and two very young children who love to bicker. So I get this a lot. But every now and then, you're going to come across people, and it's quite prevalent. You're going to look at somebody, and you're going to see a single line right down the center. Okay. This line is called a suspended, suspended needle. If it's really big, we call it suspended sword. And what this usually indicates, okay, that chain, did that scar happen to happen around your, your 30s? Three or four? Did you, have, by, did you by any chance when you were transitioning from your 20s to your 30s have some kind of a, uh, an accident or a, a, um, a less than positive event, a, a significant one? dark times yeah see here's there's i didn't i don't usually talk about this because it really gets out into woo woo land but one of the other one of the other modules in the face reading curriculum is a, is a module called ming and ming literally means destiny and we told you that the the chinese could could read your history on your face it would start at the ear and then it would travel to the other ear. And then it would travel to the center of the hairline and come down. This is called the river of life. And then it would, it would move along the jawline up to about 120. And let's say you're 30 years old. Or let's say you're 20 years old. Right? You're in your 20s here. And you got something down here. Maybe a scar from a childhood uh, adventure. What this will actually mean for you is that when you hit your 20s to 30s, at that particular age of correspondence on the face, something is going to happen in your life. So there's a predictive element based on where these scars and markings and liver spots and dimples and um, freckles and things like that manifest or or impact you based on your own internal chronology. Now that sounds really weird, but that's why I asked what happened at 20, between 29 and 30. And Shane said dark times, right? Was he going to have that before the scar? Maybe, maybe not. 
Could it be because of the scar? The Chinese would say yes. Having a scar there means there's something coming and you got to deal with it, right? Now, you, it doesn't mean you're doomed. It means forewarned is forearmed. Depending on what you, choices you make and, and how you approach things, you can mitigate that. It helps if the person's relaxed, but they can be talking. Usually they are in a face reading. So the way suspended sword manifests, let me, um, hold on a second. The way, the way um, suspended sword or suspended needle manifests, and what this means is largely that early in a person's development, and it's usually, it's usually repressed anger directed at the dominant patriarchal figure in a relationship. Now, in a single family home where there's only a mom, that, that means it could be directed at the mom when she's taking on the masculine role. But what this particular line represents is a person expressing anger. And as a, as a consequence of expressing that anger, something really bad happened. Um, give you some examples. Uh, Lillian tells a story about a, a guy who was a high-level basketball player, uh, was, in a, was playing in college, and he was playing a game one day, and he had a really strong, very prominent uh, brow line, very strong jaw, which means he has a lot of aggression that's channeled through his basketball. And they had this one guy on, on the opposing team who kept fouling him, kept checking him, kept causing penalties, calling him names, just basically trying to provoke him. And at some point, the guy went just one step too far. The guy, the guy lost it and just popped him right in the face, knocked him cold, put him in the hospital. And um, he wound up getting suspended from basketball. He actually wound up going to jail for a couple of days. Kid wound up in the hospital, and he got this big old line right down that center line. And what this symbolizes is a person who expresses their anger, and it's usually at a, at a, at a paternal, uh, the paternal uh, parent or authoritarian figure. And the pushback, the ramifications or consequences of expressing that anger causes them to lock down that anger. They make a decision right then and there to never let that energy express itself or let that energy out again. And they develop a line right here. And that's, that's what that symbolizes, a block to that energy. What this really means is they have a lot of power, a lot of drive and ability to achieve that they're holding back, that they won't let express. And at some point later in life, that blockage will manifest as an inability to move forward. Even if you know what actions to take, even if you understand exactly how to do what needs to be done, you won't take the actions. And I have people in my life who I love dearly, who are associates of mine, who have this marking, and I watch it happen to them over and over and over again. So when you have this line, understand something. You are far more powerful than you're letting yourself be. And you need to get that out. You need to remove that block so you can be in your power. Okay? Very important, very important, okay? And I see this one, I see this one a lot, a lot, a lot, okay? Uh, I, my wife has one, and depending on how she feels about her mom at any given moment, it gets bigger or, 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 or weaker. See, when, when, you, when you know exactly what caused it, don't you? All of a sudden, poof, the event connected to it just pops up there spontaneously, doesn't it? That's what happens in a face reading session. They, the, the unconscious mind spontaneously responds to the inquiry and gives you the information. Remember, when you're dealing with the unconscious mind, you're dealing with the energetic side of you. There are six things that you need to keep in mind. The unconscious mind always answers first. It always answers honestly. Oops. I'll find a way to organize this stuff into a PDF for you. It always answers honestly.
And I would, and I, I'll be honest, aside from the fact that my nose hairs aren't showing, I would like feedback on the content of this webinar. Tell me what you liked, what you didn't like, uh, what we can do better, uh, what would make it absolutely cool for you? Mine is more negative. Why? I don't know what that means. Okay. Um, and it always feels like you're making it up. When you get any of there's there's a couple other dynamics to unconscious responses. These are the big three. These are the big three. If you can trust your uncon if you can become aware of these dynamics, then you can unpack your own facial features. And if you have the tools and the technology, you can start to change those lines on your face. <laughs> no, Ray, I definitely will not forget you. Okay. So, so that's the, the emotional map. We combine the emotional map with noticing where on the face, you know, which side of the face are they more prevalent. Tells us where these people are experiencing more emotional issues. When we talk to people, we want to know what order and sequence to present information to them. Does that make sense? Yes or yes? Cool. All right. Now it's your turn. Keeping in mind that people are going to be uh, asking lots of questions. How do you figure out? That's very easy, actually, RM. What you do when you look in the mirror, what's the first feature your eyes travel to? Remember, the unconscious mind always answers first, and the part of you that controls your direction of attention is your unconscious mind. If you have an intention, also, if you want to unpack stuff, come to Golden Pass because we'll help you do that too. That's a good place to do it. Face reading trainings and Golden Pass are the best place to unpack your shit. Um, where do your eyes fall first? And then when your eyes are, are, are gravitating to a specific marking, ask, how did that happen? What's behind that? AJ says, the lines in my forehead don't make it all the way across. When the lines in your forehead don't make it all the way across, RM, what that means is those are things you haven't finished processing yet. There are things you haven't solved or problems you haven't worked out. They're still in progress. Okay? It doesn't mean it doesn't necessarily mean a bad thing. It means you're still working on it. Okay? When they go all the way across, that means you've 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 learned that lesson. And you can ask. You can simply ask, what is what's what's the lesson? What's behind this marking? What's the lesson behind this? And go with your first impression. Mine fall on the middle and top on the on the top middle of my Can you rewrite that, Carol? Number of lines difference. Basically the more lines the more shit you've had you've gone through. The more lines you have the more shit you've conquered. <laughs> Yes, many of our parents have. Many of our parents. And here's the weird thing is we'll get shit, we'll inherit shit from our parents. Uh, when you come to Identity by Design and you come, especially in Virginia, uh, and, in reg and in we're talking about regression in Brisbane, we'll be talking about something that's become relatively new in the psychology world. It's not new in uh, hypnosis, and it's called generational tra trauma. This is trauma that you've inherited genetically from your grandparents, your parents, your great-great-grandparents, and so forth. And we'll show you how to clear that stuff up. I have a deep line on the side of my mouth. Smile lines? I'd need to see the lines, Rebecca. Uh, my dad has joy lines, too. Okay, good. Both sides. Okay. Are they, when you say they're in the middle of the nose, Caroline, are they here, like between the eyebrows? Are they here or down here? I have one big mark between my eyebrows, and you just basically described me, David. This shit's accurate, man. 3,500 years of observation and testing. You know, and, and a, lot of the, a lot of 
Western scientists are starting to see correlations with personality attributes and, and facial characteristics as well. You'll be processing a lot, Laura. One of the, one of the byproducts of, of going through this is that as you unpack these, these markings on your face, you're going to trigger some level of clearing. You're going to trigger some level of processing out. It's just how it works. I, don't, I didn't design the system. Only two lines on the forehead so far must be a lot more shit coming. Could be rare, you've, or you've, you've, you're about to become a Buddha, one of the two. Okay. Yes, Jonathan, Gray Room can go a long way in helping you to clean a lot of this shit up. It also gives a whole lot more relevance to the term point to where you feel it, huh? Because you can clear stuff up by using the point, the point and feel method. Or you can do it the classic way, which is through conversation and dialogue. Did Peter asked, what about a clear line side to side on the nose, right before the tip? Okay. If it's right before the tip of the nose. All right. This is very important for us, since Peter brought it up. This is something I don't see it that often, um, but it, uh, I don't have my pen. I wasn't going to use my stylus to write this, but all right. Here's here's um, this is probably where we'll have to end it for today in terms of face reading. The nose is related to your heart. The tip of the nose is the heart organ. The space before the nose is another aspect of the heart. We call the pericardium or the heart protector. The pericardium in, in Western medicine is a sac that surrounds the heart. It helps the heart to keep beating. In Chinese medicine, the pericardium has a deeper level of significance in that it's designed to protect the heart from emotional attack, from energetic attack. So when people develop a line across the nose, it usually indicates a pericardium issue. It indicates either there's something wrong with the physical pericardium itself or there was an extreme emotional injury that the, the pericardium protected the heart from. And that marking is telling you that there's some resolution that needs to happen there. Does that, does that help? Spinning technique will work, Shane. Color breathing will work. Magic frame will work. All the techniques we teach in identity by design, when integrated with face reading, work powerfully synergistically my pericardium has a small dent any idea again same idea it's it's usually uh, an emotional injury it's it's either there's something physically wrong with your heart or your pericardium the energy system of your heart or pericardium or this emotional trauma that you've 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 endured or suffered downturn shape to the eyes usually indicates somebody who is a little bit more on the I call them the Good Samaritan eyes. Uh, when we're looking at, at uh, eye lines, when we're looking at eye lines, let me do this real quick. You have to take a draw a line from the canthus, from the outer canthus to the inner canthus. And the line's got to be straight across the pupils. If the line, if the corner of the eye travels below that line, you have a downturned eye. This person has downturned eyes. Um, if, the per, if, the, if the corner of the eye is above that line, you have an upturned eye. A nose ass. You have a deep line here, Mega? I'll tell you what that means in a minute. People who have the, the downturned eye are what I call the Good Samaritans. Now, what that means is they're very sympathetic people. 
they have a more negative view of the world than people with upturned eyes. Okay? And so because they tend to be more sympathetic, I'll bet that's better, huh, Ray? Uh, <laughs> so these people, while they have a, a little bit more of a pessimistic view of the world, they also tend to have very soft hearts. In other words, they can be taken in by a good sob story. They'll lend a hand when somebody is, seems to be in misery a lot, even if they're not, but they put on a, they tell a good story. Um, these people will tend to be a little bit more Samaritan. They're, they're the good Samaritans. That's what I like to call them. But they tend to be taken advantage of a little bit more. Okay. A lot of help, a lot of people in the helping professions have these. I have these eyes, unfortunately. <laughs> um, so I've had to learn intelligent compassion. Um, if they're upturned eyes, they tend to be a little bit more on the optimistic side. Uh, they see the world as a little bit more of a positive place. They may still be compassionate and a good Samaritan, but they don't have that negative, oh, woe is me kind of an energy to them. Or the world is a tough, challenging, rotten place and blah, blah, blah. So I recommend my people become compassionate, my students be compassionate, but they do it intelligently. Know when to bestow your compassion and how to bestow it rather than just you know, blatantly enabling people because the predators of the world have a vested interest in playing on stupidly compassionate people. That's what they do. That's how they manipulate the system. Okay. Um, for those of you who have an ass nose, and what that usually means is you have a nice little dent right down the center of your nose. <laughs> This is what we call a human angel marking. This is somebody who, just like the uh, the Good Samaritan eyebrows, um, they have a deep need to help others, a deep need to um, to make the make the world a better place. But they're also very conscious people. There's a part of them that knows they're more than just this body. That their true home is from somewhere else, and where they're at right now isn't it. So they're always a little bit sad. So I often see this marking, not always, but many times I see this marking combined with the downturn of the eyes. Okay, uh, You may not see it, but if you press on your nose, you can probably feel a little indentation. If you have that marking, that tends to mean that you're a little bit of a human angel. You have a, a strongly compassionate nature and a sincere desire to help. Um, physiologically, these people tend to be a little bit more blood deficient. They tend to be a little bit more anemic. So they need to eat a lot more red meats, a lot more blood building foods, because they're always giving that blood away. They're always giving that energy away to others to help others. Deep horizontal lines in the middle of the forehead are just deeper issues that we're going through. You're a hair nose angel. <laughs> I'm not sure what that means or that I want to. Okay, uh, let's see. So does that help? Does that answer some, whoops. Okay, very cool. I'm going to stand up again. I know you're messing with me. Uh, um, aquiline noses and bumps on the nose mean two very different things. Bumps on the nose tends to, is usually a sign of somebody who likes to be in charge. Aquiline noses are people who are very metallic. They tend to be very um, orderly and sophisticated. They tend to be uh, good money makers. Um, I have to look more. I have to look that up more. And uh, yeah, so let me go ahead and erase some of this stuff. Get all this schmutz off my uh, off my diagram. Yeah, uh, aquiline noses tend to be very metallic features. And uh, and so these people tend to be very, they like order as opposed to being organized. Wood people can be very organized, but they're not always orderly. Uh, metallic people, they, they, they things need to be just right. <laughs> Horizontal line across the bridge of the nose usually indicates blood sugar issues. There's usually something going on uh, with your diet, 
that needs looking into. Okay. Well, it's just, uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed uh, our webinar. It's getting late. I'm getting vehement text messages. Hey, Bobby, I'm getting vehement text messages from the wife. Once again, these are the packages we've got going on. Um, I would love to see you all in person and, and really um, help you on your path. So I'm hoping to see a lot of you in Dallas, if not in Dallas, at least at Identity by Design. Um, so just as a quick review, uh, the Know Thyself offer is uh, Secrets for Understanding Yourself and Others, Healing Emotional Trauma, Getting Rid of Negative Emotions, and Removing the Blocks to Your Success. It has our Secrets of Face Reading and Chinese Medical Hypnotherapy course, valued at $997. The Identity by Design program, which is all the techniques we use to clear that shit out, $1,497 value. Lie to Me If You Dare, How to Catch Liars, $97 value. Um, vibrational Healing, very powerful course. Make sure you do Identity by Design first before we doing those videos. People Reading for Fun and Profits, a two-day intensive, $997 value. And I recommend, if you're one of the first 25 to jump on this offer, that you get that VIP Golden Path ticket. You can, If you were to go to the website and try to get all this, first of all, you couldn't do it. Uh, it would cost you over $7,000. If you're one of the first 25 to sign up today, you can get all that in package A for one low installment of $997, or you can do three easy payments of $397 each. That good, that offer is good until uh, I log off the webinar today or 10 p.m., which is probably what's going to – 7 p.m. is probably going to come first. If you're more interested in romance, dating, attraction, relationship application – if you're a relationship or dating coach, then the package you might want is package B, which is secrets of face reading. It's the, low, it's the speed reading people for – uh, am I going to run a deal for the Identity by Design, sir? Uh, we have the 10-day package, or we have this package here. Uh, otherwise, it's $22.50 at the door. No, that helps. I would grab one of these if you if you want to come to one of those events. If you want to come to one of those events, I would grab either this package or I would get the uh, the 10-day all-in-one inclusive package. That is going to give you seriously the biggest bang for your buck. Plus, you get those hundreds of hours of you get 10 years worth of archived video from all the other trainings. So you get a huge amount of stuff. Thank you, Bobby. So this is going to give you the secrets of face reading and Chinese medicine home study course valued at $997. People reading for fun and profit valued at $497. The speed attraction, rapid attraction secrets program, $1,497. It's all right, Ray. Um, it'll be real world. Uh, it'll include real world romance, the co-ed workshop on romance training for men and women together, $1,497 value. The unlimited lover program valued at $997. And the Killer Influence Secrets of Covert Hypnosis uh, Hypnotic Influence Training Package, valued at $997. It will also throw in there the Lie to Me If You Dare training. I will be sending out the replay. Uh, we've got two recorders going right now, so uh, we should be able to get you a replay no matter what. Um, but th um, the, the VIP ticket offer, which you may or may not have seen, will not be available on the replay. So if you know you want to come to a training, if you know you want to get the biggest bang for your buck, I would recommend you reach out to Brandon or Henry or Stephanie right now. Guys, uh, Henry or Stephanie or Brandon, can you throw in those links for them so people can grab the last remaining packages? I know we've only got a couple left. Rebecca said, I'm sorry I didn't get that answer. What I don't know what answer you're talking about. Ask the question again, and I'll try to get to it. Um, uh, and hold on a second. Who said something about me improving their life? I wanted to read that. Uh, all right, I'll have to. I'll have to go back and look at those things. Oh my goodness! Look, face reading super package. Okay, um, and finally, uh, for those of you who have a more professional or um, you know business orient to this material, uh, we have the business face to face face reading for strategic leadership and influence package. It's going to include the secrets of face reading. Uh, for $997, people reading for fun and profit valued at $497, stealth CPI level one, conversational persuasion and influence valued at $1,997, the stealth selling secrets, uh, rapid sales and interview crushing techniques valued at $497, CPI two, strategic narrative and metaphor valued at $1,497, 
CPI uh, three, rapid resistance removal, reframing, and conversational belief change, valued at fourteen hundred ninety-seven dollars. And finally, we're going to throw in the lie detection, lie to me if you dare course, valued at ninety-seven dollars. If you were to look at any of these packages for the package B, it's six thousand four hundred eighty-two dollars if you wanted to buy it retail, uh, six thousand nine hundred eighty-two dollars if you were going to buy the business package on the website. But if, for those of you on the webinar today, you can get everything for one low installment of just $997 or three easy payments of $397 each. If you grab it before the end of the class today, you're also going to receive um, a free VIP bonus ticket that you can use for any event in our 2020 calendar as long as you qualify for it. And what that means is you either have the prerequisites um, or you worked out something special with Stephanie. Um, we went through the catalog or the calendar earlier in the train in the webinar. Uh, the first three entries you see here are my recommendations for the biggest bang for your buck to go with the the offers mentioned above. These three, but option four is also a really good idea if you know that you want to train with me and. Uh, you may not know exactly what you want to train in yet. And I always tell people, I always tell my students before you buy anything or before you register for any program, call us or ask us first. We'll give you recommendations because if you've been to our website, you know that um, there's a lot of product there. And our job is to get you from where you are to where you want to be with the least amount of steps possible. And if you tell us what it is you really want to accomplish and how you want and what you want to do, we can tell you exactly what training path to take. Uh, in, in within our material so you can get the biggest bang for your buck. That's my job. I mean, I, yes, I sell products and that's important, but my, my big goal, my, my most important goal is to empower you, is to give you the tools that you need to get the life that you want the way that you want it on your terms, by your standards, by your expectations. And rather than flying blind, uh, let us help. Let us, you know, you've seen the the power of what we do. You've you, you can binge watch to your hearts. You binge watch to your hearts content on our YouTube channel. By all means, uh, and if we need, if you if you have some of the products, this is something we should talk about really quick. If you have some of the products here, right? Let's say you have identity by design, or you have vibrational healing. You can swap it out for something else of equal or lesser value. So if if that's something that was in your way, don't worry about it. If you have it, if there was no worry, you don't need to worry about duplicating it. We'll swap it out with something of equal or lesser value or something that's a better fit. We can customize these packages a little bit for you. So that's what I've got for you. I hope that um, I hope you've gotten a lot out of this webinar. I've certainly enjoyed presenting it. This material never gets old. I promise you, I will go back and look at the chat logs. So I will see every nose hair comment that uh, that Ray put out there. <laughs> um, and all those other good things. But uh, my goal is to give you something that you can take away and start using today. And, and I hope we've done that. Uh, I hope we've given you uh, enough information that, uh, that you can go out and you can start making changes in your life right away. Everybody good? Reach out to Brandon. Stephanie is online. I'm going to go talk to a wrinkle. Excellent. That's a good way to start. Off to do homework. Excellent. Be sure you get your packages. I'm going to, I'm going to switch back to.